good at by Peter. What? From the far, get high. Ends up losing his life and sees Triple G just facing the ball. Oh! you like them apples? Welcome, Survivors! Welcome to the Southeast Asia 2024 Free Fire World Series. My name is AJ. I'm the Mustachio down here with Danny this time around, and we are your casters for the day. Danny, how you doing? Dude, I'm super, super excited to see how things are going to round out for this week because we are getting so, so close to the final leg of the competition. Oh, yeah. Stuff's getting really intense, and I think the teams are starting to feel that fire, you know, that fire coming in from underneath because some of these teams, they're running out of time. They've got to get those points. We've got our leaders obviously leading the pack, but yep. the ultimate goal is making top 12. And for some of these teams, that goal is slowly falling, oh, like it's just slowly out of their reach. Oh yeah, I can absolutely agree with you, right? You've got Deva United Apollo down in the 14th spot. And for them to mm. get just into the 13th place, is going to take them about 73 points more than heavy. The Vietnamese squad, it's not an easy task at all. There are huge gaps between teams because we've never run a format like this before six weeks of the knockout stages three days of play in each and every single week there's just way too many games and way too many games either results in more opportunities for you to catch up or alternatively more op opportunities for some of these dominant squads to really put some distance between themselves and others right for example we were just talking about this at the very start of the day Buriram United Esports sits at the very top of the leaderboard with a 66 point lead and they still have six games more to play as opposed to the teams in second and third spot, which is ridiculous at this point. It is. Now, speaking of second and third place, I just want to remind everyone as well, today we're only going to be seeing teams in Group A and C compete today. Uh, you're going to give me a second, AJ. <laughs> <laughs> My son's excited too. He's at... If not, Buriram can go on out there and dominate these teams once again. It seems like they did absolutely exactly that yesterday. We saw WAG setting a bombastic record, hitting 35 points, sorry, 36 points. And then they came in and swooped away the record with the 37 of their own. But of course, these are the now, highlights it's from yesterday. Time. Can Let's they do it with Onyx Olympus? Boshi doesn't even stand a chance. And mm -mm. Jonah also gets taken down. Onyx Olympus are on road to take this round away. Stop going down, Diamond with the trade. Just single player, and that one goes down as well. 14 eliminates, solid with the Booyah. For the Thai Giants, Raja, I think he has sniped. Dog Boji on top of the roof. This guy is taking out everyone from Tona. Where are you? <laughs> like, I'm not going to high five you, man. We started with them on Bermuda, and it seems like we're going to end with them on Bermuda. WAG to bring it back home on a high note for Vietnam. Oh yeah, 13 eliminations, they hit the booyah, they take out, and the smiles on the faces of the boys. I'll go back in. <laughs> And this is the calendar. We've completed two weeks already. We're currently in week three. Today is the 7th of April, which means it's the final day of play before we take a break for Hari Raya. And then we get back into it for three more weeks of the knockout stages before we arrive at the final week where only the top 12, the 12 best teams get to play their hearts out to see exactly who gets crowned the champions of the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia 2024. And I think the question people have is, can people best the Giants, right? Because we're around United, they are the team running with the target on their forehead. Everyone is trying to beat them. They're accumulating such a lead. And if they continue with how things are right now, their trajectory, no one will overtake them. They will accrue so many points going into the finals and knowing Buriram, how they play. 
getting that point rush advantage. I say advantage because this is something that this team can absolutely capitalize on. But before that, though, we do need to talk about the point system. We are running the standard point system for Free Fire with 12 points for our team that secures the Booyah, nine for second, eight for third. As you go down, you'll get, you'll get less and less points. Down to 11th and 12th, where these, two bo these bottom two teams, unfortunately, will not get any points at all. But we are gonna also see eliminations come into play as we have for the past three weeks, because every elimination is gonna secure your team one point. And AJ, we had this discussion off stream mm. as well, how some of these teams in particular Boyram, these high elimination teams, they are so high on the leaderboard because they're getting all the elimination points. They're not relying on placements. Oh yeah, absolutely, right? And of course, they are out there because they know for a fact on placements, it's limited. The maximum you can yes. walk away is 12 eliminations on the other hand. I mean, well, you are absolutely free to pick up as many as you want. But in any case, if you do end up on a tiebreaker situation, the number of booyahs will stand to take you away for the victory. If you're tied on that as well, you look at the total eliminations, which is very important at this point of time. And clearly some teams are winning that out hands down. And if even that fails, we'll fall back to survival ranks of the final round, which can surely not fail us. Yes, and it's also going to be the most tense match for these teams as well because your survival rank, if it comes down to that, it's it could just be do or die for some of these teams. So yeah. we're still just about to hit the halfway mark here for the group stage. We're already starting to see the leaderboard. We're already starting to see teams settle in. Others are still playing catch up. Others are just trying to maintain their positions. And speaking of teams, Group C and A will be the stars of the show today. They are playing their last day of points today until we conclude week number three. Now, unfortunately for teams in Group B, they've played all their matches. So they are at the mercy of Group C and A. And as we saw on the leaderboard, mm -hmm. we already are seeing a number of teams from Group B. They're in a pretty good position on, yeah. the, on the first half of the page, but we can absolutely see changes, yeah, we especially with C and, and C and A. Absolutely. RRQ, Kazu, as well as PE Esports, the ones who are in the most trouble because they don't get to play and they're pretty much in a position where they can be replaced through a lot of hustle down at the very bottom as there's not a lot of points in terms of difference. But let's take a look at the team list that's going to be in play today. And of course, one to highlight will be C Triple G. They've lost at number two spot already. They're going to try to hustle back up for it. They are from Thailand. And I only say the second spot because at this point of time, catching up with Buriram, who are currently in first place, seems to be nearly impossible. Nearly impossible. I think dream scenario, Buriram just bomb out all of their matches today or they go on holiday, you know, early holiday for Raya. C Triple G get all the points and then maybe, just maybe that would be a case where C Triple G can catch up. But it's still a 90 point differential between these two teams. So best of luck to C Triple G. I think if anything, their goal is just to try and close that gap between them and Buriram as much as possible if first place is their goal. Because remember folks, for these teams, they can compete for placements if they want to aim for that prize money. Yeah. Ultimately, top 12 is the big goal because the main prize pool is going to be on that grand final weekend. So yeah. if you have to, yeah. some teams, they save strats. I'm not a fan of saving strats. AJ, I don't think you're a fan of saving strats either. Just just play all out. I mean, you've got tons of weeks to play all of this out, right? You might as well just show us exactly what you have and then try to tweak it to perfection before we get it into the final week. Now, we did see, of course, what attack all around had to serve us up in terms of their stats. But here's also another team that is pretty close to them sitting down in the sixth spot. Indostars with a 6.5 elimination average, average damage of 4,120 as well as a 6.0 assist. I would love to see exactly who the MVP of this squad is as well. And it's going to be none other than Ray with a 1.5 average headshot and 1.9 eliminations. Nothing much to score cream about but it has been enough to keep them in the upper half of the overall leaderboard i mean this is the kind of team that has shown a lot of promise in the competition thus far and their biggest rivals i'll have to say is not actually attack all around but their own brothers from indonesia the one and only indostars just one point differential between these two teams <laughs> it could just be a battle of the indonesians but i think the goal for the indonesians too is you know catch up to attack all round try to get that fifth place from that team I think if anything, the Indonesians, they just want to try and break into top five if possible. The goal is definitely possible, especially with the rise of these two teams from Indonesia. We all know that Thailand, you know, obviously very dominant region. 
But I do think Indonesia, they are slowly catching up. And with every game that these regions play against each other, it's an opportunity for the regions to learn about each other. And I think Thailand, they scrim against each other all the time. How much more can you learn from each other? But for Indonesia, they have so much knowledge that they're gaining from all of these matches. The deck all around overall has about 34 more eliminations than EVOS Divine. You can see they're depicted from the average eliminations per match that mm. is played out there. But EVOS Divine has got a slightly better average on the teammate rescues. That might not necessarily be a good thing because those players are, tend to be a little bit more exposed out there on the battlefield, putting them in a very, very bad position to get into that final circle. Early of those circles within the first three pocket market can of course save your life if you have Susie if you've got all of those coins on your side and speaking of Susie and coins let's take a look at the top three used characters for active and passive skills that Suya clearly takes the cake here he allows yep. you to burst around the battlefield in a defensive or offensive stature and most of the time can change the tide of the game Yes, and then of course you also see the A124 just being able to disable those actives, especially in those very close quarter combat situations, can be extremely helpful if your team is deciding to want to rush onto somebody. Yeah. But AJ, we've got to speak about some of these passives because Susie has been the star of the show. The fact that you're able to just earn extra money if you're able to get those eliminations, it's played a massive role for these teams, especially if you want to really try and play with the with the econ. Yeah, absolutely. But of course, because everybody will be trying to get more money, you need that extra debate of defense as well and hence why Andrew yes. Awaken is your most popular character out there with the extra layer of defense and you can stack him up as long as more people within your squad bring him in as a passive character as well and Nairi with his Ice Iron except of course with the fact that if you do have a M82B on the opposite side even that Ice Wall which is built out of iron cannot really save you <laughs> yes and of course we do have our top three pets as well arvon being a massive pet here for these teams just the dinoculars extremely helpful for the teams in general just to get that information yeah. figure out roughly how many players are in the vicinity beast on being able to help with those throwable items really really helpful mm -hmm. if you want to try and go for those very long lobs and then of course drecky just being able to spot anyone healing behind those glue walls it, i think feel like drecky is such an important pet to have when you're going into that late game and there's just glue walls everywhere. Sometimes you don't have a very good line of sight. Drecky mm. being able to spot out people healing, super, super helpful in those clutch moments. Absolutely. And of course, it gets a little bit crowded out there and everybody's trying to patch themselves up because of how heated the battle is within that final circle. Mm. Drecky's going to be able to expose each and every single one of them, which makes the takedown a tad bit more easier. But of course, you just saw the lineup of maps that we have and on Bermuda, these are the top three teams that we're going to be keeping our eyes on. Reverse Red, unfortunately, they will not be playing today. Expand and WAG, WAG in Group C, they still have an opportunity here. We have to add in another team within the Group A and C combination, and that is Attack All Around. These are the top three teams that are, you know, pretty much dependable to pick up all of those points. The surprising thing here is, though, Expand being the most dominant within this particular grouping does not have a single boo yet to their name. Yeah, this, it's kind of shocking, actually. I mean, AJ, what do you feel about Expand? Like, what do you think is kind of holding this team back at this point of time? Because they have, the team is, put, they're, they're skilled, they have some mm. very great players on their lineup, but just what's stopping Expand from being able to pick up those booyahs, you think? I, I don't think anything is stopping Expand in the grand scheme of things. If you want to compare their current performance versus their previous performance versus not their own, as well as all of the other Malay Asian team's performance on an international stage, this is a huge mm. upgrade, right? I mean, even in the current overall leaderboard, let's take a look at those points. Expand is standing at 322 points as opposed to Toda and Homeboys who are on 205. That's a clear 100 point gap between this particular mm -hmm. Malaysian squad as well as their brothers. They have done tremendously well thus far in the competition, but they're still finding their adjustments, right? This is a team that has yes. gone up not by, you know, hooking on other people's backs, but really stood on their own two feet and climbed this mountain and therefore they have to take it step by step. They started off with dominating the Malaysian scene first, not just through one season, but multiple seasons and making themselves the back-to-back -back champion of Malaysia. And slowly now, the improvement is coming forth, not on the world stage, but on the Southeast Asian stage. The fact of the matter mm -hmm. is that they can still hold their own against teams like CGGG, Attack All Around, Indostars, 
Even Buriram sometimes shows that Expand has truly grown. But will they be enough in terms of firepower to deal with the Thai teams later on to sneak away those Buyas? That has always been the problem, especially here in Bermuda. Thailand's not even the biggest threat. It's surprisingly Vietnam. WAG mm. is insane. Even yesterday, against a team like Buriram Esports in the exact same lobby, you saw WAG walking away with Booyah. I mean, that's the reason why this team has six Booyahs, even though they're in mm. ninth place. It is absolutely crazy. And actually, speaking of expand, let's talk about our bottom three teams, right? Oh, yeah. Because these three teams, unfortunately, are at the most, at the highest risk of possibly losing their top 12th placement, right? Mm. We have Heavy who are sitting on 13. Now the thing is, luckily for Expand and Onyx, Heavy is not playing today. So they are, not, they're not gonna be the ones to catch up, but there is an opportunity still for Dewa, God of Wolf and Todak to pick up points and to close that gap between them, Expand and Onyx. Yeah. So of the remaining teams in the bottom of the bracket that are mm. not top 12, who do you feel like has the potential to actually still break it into top 12? Oh, that's a, it's a painful question, not for me, but for the teams who are going to hear this answer, nobody's a threat at this point of time. Because if you really want to take a look at how the situation is looking here from the 13th spot onwards, Heavy just needs eight points to catch up with Onyx Olympus. But like you said, Heavy's not even playing today. Deva United Apollo needs 82 points. The team below them, God of Wolf, needs 89 points more than the team that's sitting down in 12. So I, that, that's a whole days of play. And even great mid-tier teams cannot walk away with 80 points. So it's, a, it's, it's merely impossible at this point of time. They have to hustle though. It's not impossible in the grand scheme of things because we still have three weeks to play after today's over. All right, looks like we're going to be jumping into map number one here. AJ, we're going back to Bermuda. Oh, the yeah. grand beginning for all of these teams. And it's time to drop uh -oh. in. Let's see where we're going. And if we're going to be seeing any cheeky hot drops. And it looks like we're seeing a lot of teams just go in for that early drop. Money to go for those very early drop points. Yeah. At the moment, we're not really seeing any hot drops. Although actually, WAG and Diwa could think about this. Are they really going to fly in together? There's potential that WAG might just go out on a hunting spree. The witch hunt from WAG should be expected because they were hot yesterday. They will continue to be hot today. As long as it's going to be on Bermuda, you can expect them to strike big, right? I mean, they started off and they ended off yesterday with two booyas, right? And both of those booyas yes. on Bermuda, this is the best team on this particular map. As far as I'm concerned, as long as Buriram does not meet them early, there's a high chance we see that happening once again for WAG. But it seems like Toda is going to be in a little bit of trouble as well as God of Wolf hot drops them at this point. Actually, I think it might be God of Wolf that's in trouble because Todak, they do have a number of weapons picked up on their players so far. Noki is going to be fighting up against Dion. He's got support traps. He's thinking about coming in. D Kong, though, not going to be too happy himself. Very low. 49 health. We'll be able to get the recovery off. So a little bit lucky there with the health pack. And it looks like we might have a bit of a stalemate here, AJ, mm. as these teams are trying to just continue to lose and put themselves in a better position with their inventory. Although Noki, not as lucky, actually going to be downed. And his team is not near him. Yeah, this is a very peculiar position held here by Thoda. They know that they are in trouble and you can see two very different strategies, right? God of Wolf choosing to stick together like a pack of wolves as they are. And Thoda, on the other hand, they're swimming all around each other, pretty far from each other, trying to get good command of space within this location. But unfortunately for them, if their player does go ahead to fall, instead of picking them up, they'll have to depend on those revives and that's a hard reset for the player. So I'm not so much in favor of the strategy Toda is holding on to. It's only, of course, going to check out if you do get all of those shots from those wide angles on those crossfire setup, right? Unfortunately, mm -mm. Toda's just not that dangerous. Yeah, and I think we also saw on the kill feed as well, Buriram ran into attack all around, and I did see a couple players for attack all around go down. So this is going to be a really tough mm. matchup for that team in particular if they can't find those revives. And we all know how Buriram plays. If a team like Buriram seeks a target, they actually try and go for that killing blow. But WAG, AJ, the favorites to win on this map. They're hunting, but uh, I think luckily for everyone else, WAG isn't really near anybody. And WAG is fairly inconsistent with most of their map plays, except Bermuda. It, surprisingly, they really have nailed down this rotation. They have to be careful though, because once again, this is not the most threatening team out there when it comes to engagements. I know 
That's a little surprising because they set the record at the start of the day yesterday. Massive number of eliminations, clocking in more than 35 points. But the problem is you don't see that on each and every single game. They just have to watch out because if they get targeted, they might just be in a little bit of trouble. Mm -mm. So I think after those initial skirmishes for these teams, AJ, just going to be a little bit of a slow one here. Everyone mm. trying to loot up and get into a better position. No aggression at all. Quite surprised that we aren't seeing any more kills on that kill feed. I actually thought maybe some of these teams would have decided to go hunting. Uh -oh. And actually that is going to be the case here. So expand might be WAG's next target. But the question is, has expand seen WAG yet? It seems like they may have because they are continuing to run away. But uh, we're also chasing that uh, circle as well. So it looks like WAG, they will be able to find themselves a really good position in that circle. And we are back to a peace treaty. Although, hang on a minute. No peace treaty anymore. Todak is... Okay, who is chasing who? Is it God of Wolf chasing Todak or the other way around? It seems like maybe God of Wolf are the ones looking to, t to actually go for the killing blow on Todak. Uh, I, I believe Todak is the ones who are trigger happy in this situation. And they are desperate for points. So hot dropping God of Wolf might have just been a solid strategy from Toda because they are right below them, right? 14 points behind God of Wolf. If they want to replace them in the 15th spot, God of Wolf should not be able to pick up any points. So, you know, technically speaking, that strategy does check out. The only problem here is do they have enough firepower and the skills to execute God of Wolf the moment they see them? At this point of time, just doesn't seem to be the case. Even with Noki on that hard reset, it seems like Toda just needs to slow the pace down a little bit. And they're doing well. We've seen a couple of instances where they have taken shots when it was absolutely not required. But in this particular scenario, the only mistake was the use of the Tats uh, sorry, not the Tatsuya, the Homer earlier, which is a little bit of a waste. But apart from that, no further engagements from Toda. So I guess they'll stay alive for a little bit more. Oui. In. Yes, then they know what position they're going to be coming in when they do try to find that safe zone in the circle. That is correct. Uh, team expand. Circling on in, and the skirmish between them and WAG is about to break out. Flash on the other hand, Ornick out of nowhere. Two Indonesian teams pummeling down on Team Flash at the same time. Flash can't run away. They move on to the right. Ornick will take them out. But a fantastic use of the portal goal to cut straight through the both Indonesian teams, leaving Yanvin as the target, as the bait. And the rest of Team Flash, they get away. A sneaky play coming on through. And this might have just been the perfect move from Flash because it could just bait them in to go in to engage with Onik instead of for the chase against them. Oh, this is not going to be looking too good for all of our Indonesian fans because it's not good to see your own region going up against one another. Evos, though, is going to be having an absolute heyday trying to chase down Onik, but they can't quite get the angle Evos is going to be sticking to the side of the cliff here. We do catch a glimpse of Buriram. We don't quite know how close they are to this skirmish, but mm. if they're close enough, I think they actually might hear the gunshots. And you know, Buriram, they're going to be wherever those gunshots will be. But it seems it's just going to be a slower pace matchup. They couldn't get the angle on Onyx, so Evos will just slow things down and just continue on with the looting game. Same thing here with Flash as well. It seems like Flash are just not too happy looking to try and engage either. They do have two yeah. players that had to be revived. And we all know with revives, you come back into the game with no items. So continue on with the looting game for this team. Attack all round. Now, this is a team we haven't heard of at all this match. Very mm. quiet, but they did run into Buriram in uh, in the early sections of this match. So as you can see, Karoro was the player that did go down early on. Thankfully, they did recover. And they're going to continue with that looting game as well. So attack all round, still very much in this matchup. And it looks like IDS. We haven't seen much. We haven't seen much happening from this team either. No eliminations. Haven't seen them jump into any skirmishes. C Triple G, same thing as well. There's just yeah. no one within their line of path going into that next zone. 
Yeah, classic Indo stars, they always like to stay silent until the final circle before they do start a pop off, which is more of my style of play, right? The mm. the priority should be to get into that final circle, aim for that booyah, at the same time pick up your eliminations. Early skirmishes have proved many a times to be absolutely detrimental for Indo stars, and they're just not making a lot of those mistakes anymore. So I I love that for them, always playing around the very edge of the circle, trying to be the last team in and potentially catch a couple of teams within engagement as the third party it has always checked out well for them but now Buriram, they have spotted out team flash already and this is a dangerous situation for team flash firepower wise team flash has no chance whatsoever against Buriram. Oh my gosh, that was such an aggressive push coming in from Osana as well. Just jumps in front Ooh. of Flash Ooh, no, no, and he no, 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 was no. able to just sort of fight. But hang on a minute though, Artemis is going to be going down there from Flash. Get high, spotting things out for his team on the bottom. As they do continue to push, Funa going to be trying to go for a elimination here as well. Trying to break through those blue walls and eventually they will break through. Because if you're blocked in with your own blue walls, you know your death is going to be inevitable. Final hit coming through. That's going to be another elimination for Buriram. They do have one more player to chase and it's Shin. But can Shin get away from this? I don't think that is going to be the case. But guess who's nearby as well? We have Onik on the edge of the skirmish. The question here, and also Indo Stars, both Indonesian teams within the vicinity, do they stick their nose into this business? Are they aware that this could potentially be one of the front runners? Cough, cough, Buriram United, we'll have to see. Buriram just got out of a skirmish. They have lost one player already, but that is not a huge detriment to a team that can play a 1v4 with their eyes absolutely closed, not taking a single peek. But we'll have to change our view over here to attack all around as well as expand against Daywa United. Daywa United caught in a very tight spot here. Mr. 17, Bison saves the day. He's got the lock on missile as Axel brings Cobra back into the game. The pickup is there for Mr. 17, but just a sliver of health. This circle is doing him in. Attack all around Ooh. on the other hand against WAG. Wiping the floor with WAG. Two of their players did get wiped out, but the ghost is still there for WAG to bring in those revivals, even if he does lose his life, there is still an insurance policy here. Oh, what a massive loss, unfortunately, for WAG. But attack all around, fantastic execution of this very, very crowded fight. But they're going to have to deal with another target, C Triple G. We'll take a look a little bit later on as we are going to be switching back to Indo Stars as Boriram is sticking around. And so far, nobody is in a position to get a good angle for this fight. But things could change very soon because Onik is still hanging around these teams really trying to see if they can try and get the advantage over each other but here we go c triple g jumping into this fight and so far otana is going to be okay he's going to actually recoup with his teammate prune god going to be hiding in that compound as well what's the plan here for c triple g do they really want to fight into this it looks like they're thinking twice and actually running away from attack all around and actually going to be portaling away as well so ultra safe play from this team but Gonna be switching over again, AJ, this time to Evos. Oh, beautiful shots coming through from Ray. The Bison is really hitting those deadly shots. The spray on it is controlled perfectly out of Evos Divine. And now the Divine grenades being chucked at God of Wolf as well. God of Wolf has just nowhere to go. Deanne, the final one to just bait all of those shots whilst they send out a survivor to potentially get those revivals for them. But this is circle number three already. They're quickly running out of time. Circles closing on in, pocket shop closing, and the the chances of easy revivals going down but <gasps> Buriram oh my gosh how could we miss that fight that was absolutely surprising so this is going to be a massive game for all these teams because Buriram now out of the running meaning there's going to be points here for C Triple G all of our front runners and even WAG if the team is able to get the recovery off but for now C Triple G sitting on two eliminations they do lose Peter in the process and Cos Q is actually stuck in this compound trying to break through these blue walls but just not successfully able to do so in the meantime though jump god is just healing in that compound poon god is there trying to get an angle onto Kozki, but he can't quite get it he's gonna run in is this gonna be a mistake it looks like Rony's looking at two members one member now on attack all round poon god all alone goes into the teleport Oi. and he gets caught and i think that's gonna be it attack all round going to be our second team to be eliminated unless he can pick himself up, which could actually happen. Turdak, though, going to be sticking their nose into uh, into C Triple G's business now, actually sniping from a range. Trap's going to be spotting out his for his team as well. But with that compound there, it will be quite difficult for Turdak to contest mm. until C Triple G are forced to move 
with that blue zone, which is going to be up the hill. And what? look at this, Todak going to be jumping in. Yep, cost two down already. This is a big one for Toda. They pull off the ambush. Everybody from the side of C, Triple G shut down inside this house. Raja can't find his way in. Barricades off blue walls, but he does chuck in one good grenade and one more outside. Oh, now Raja with the charge buster. Can't find an angle just yet, but the damage has been done. The advantage to the Malaysians, but the Malaysians are not Toda. The advantage is on the side of Expand. Toda just helping them out. Oh my goodness. Dare we're going to be ending the round in 11th place as well, unfortunately. But I have to say, though, Todak, extremely brave play. But they have pushed C Triple G into a very Ooh. awkward corner because they're out in the blue zone. They don't have an easy way into the circle. But it looks like it's time for everybody to move. And with the circle being up the hill here on Mill, it's going to be a task for these teams on the bottom of the hill to even find a safe place when they get up here. The team's already camping on top of this hill, have a massive advantage in the competition. Competition. Expand going to be ending the round in 11th place. I think we're going to see some of these teams drop like flies now, AJ. Oh, yeah, absolutely. WAG is still in here, but there's no revivals just yet. So, hoping for them to pull away a booyah now, just went the down the drain as well with Expand out. This is just insanity. C Triple G could potentially stand a chance to pull off the booyah. Oh, my out gosh. Of nowhere, look at but all the portals. Th there's just no way. There's just no way for them to oh hit that revive. Jeez, yeah, it, this is this is the thing. If your team relies on the revives and you don't have an, any way to actually reach a vending machine or get any kind of revive, it really sets you back. And with eight teams left in the competition, AJ, it's going to be a task to even get to the vending machine in this fight. But so oh. far, teams are everywhere. It looks like Raz on the rooftop spotting out for Indo Stars. Actually going to leave it as well. Too scared to lose his life as he now realizes... It's do or die for all of these teams. Any headshots, any knockdowns, it's going to cause a flurry of teams to rush in and get those eliminations themselves. But so far, it's a game of chicken. Everyone's scared. Indostars just camping at the vending machine, making sure nobody oh, can buy Batana. back the players. Otna with an opportunity here. If he can get there, I believe he's got the cash to buy back his team members. He has been spotted. The Thai team's an opportunity. GOW's out. And Indostar's not making any plans to move away from this vending machine at all. No, I mean, I can absolutely understand why you want to be camping that vending machine. If you want to use it, you definitely have access to it. And teams sitting on the rooftop and on top of the hills, they do have an advantage if these teams do stick their head out of their compounds. But oh my goodness, we're starting to see some really drastic uh -oh. measures come in as Todak's not going to try and find their way in. Looks like Flash going to be ending the round in seventh place here. So, so close to one another. So many neighbors. They're going to have to start evicting each other. Otherwise, they're going to run out of space. Todak, though, on the edge, having to play with the blue walls and going out into the blue zone. Can't quite get a good angle into the circle at all. Raja going to be going down there on the side of Todak. Indo they're doing their best to just hide in this maze of glue walls. So many glue walls here, AJ. Yeah, Indostars, they have a great big opportunity here. They've got that high ground advantage. But at the edge of the circle, this is a disadvantage as well. When we start moving on in, in 10 more seconds, Indostars will have to move out of that position. But Toda hanging on with a single player there. Sorry, two players. So this is a good advantage for them. If they can try to snipe out Indostars from up the hill, they could oh, maybe walk here. away with a surprise booyah. Ertna is still in the game. He somehow managed to survive hiding in that corner. He has been spotted out, but it looks like WAG, Todak, and CGGG are going to be going for an engagement. Indostar sticking their nose into this fight as well. Looks like they have found Cyrus here on the side of WAG. Wow. Kochia looking for this kill. Can't quite find that angle. Great blue balls thrown out by Cyrus. Just buying time, but we are seeing some wipeouts here. Todak in third place. Down to our final two teams, Indostar. Going up against WAG, but it looks like it should be a pretty easy one here, AJ. Indostar securing the first Booyah of the day. Absolutely beautiful from Indostars. And the meta of holding on to that high ground advantage, the bird's eye view gives them that perfect vision as to how to get themselves from point A to point Booyah in that one game. And they have managed to hit the high notes. This is their very first Booyah on this map. And it's a proud one for them. Indostars is on the way to catch up with attack all around. And with attack all around, getting down and out at so early in the game, they've managed to slash down the distance between them by at least 20 points now. 
time to make that climb, AJ. It's time to make that climb. For some of these teams, it's all downhill, but I think if you're Indo Stars, you want to keep going up, up, and up. Get those points. End the group stage as high as you can. Get that morale boost as well. But I can see our Indonesian fans in the comments going to be super happy with this victory. Yeah. Indo Stars just really getting better week after week, game after game. It's actually really good to see them just doing so, so well. I kind of wonder like what's going to be the, their peak, what's going to be their limit because so far it doesn't seem like they have one yet. They just keep breaking their own personal goals. No doubt at all that's exactly what they are aiming for to be the very best version of themselves and in the stars have done decently well. Fourth booyah of the knockout stages and pretty massive in terms of the eliminations when you take into account all of those mid groupings along the overall leaderboard but i have to say the saddest team out there has to be attack all around not just because they got knocked out early in this bermuda but also because they're the only thai team that is potentially at risk of losing their spot on the overall leaderboard today because of how close the indonesians are to them every single other thai squad is clear off the top of the leaderboard by at least 100 points Exactly. I mean, it also depends on the goal for attack all round two, right? Like, do they really want to climb that leaderboard or do they just want to maintain their position? They're pretty safe for top 12 at this point. I mean, a lot of the teams in top 12 now are actually guaranteed top 12 for at least this week, unless they drop the ball. And it does occasionally happen, but I think everyone should be staying in their relative positions. But I think the question I have as well, and you're probably wondering as well, is what points are we looking at how many points were gained for our teams that were towards the bottom of the bracket are we going to be seeing any significant changes down there are we going to be seeing any placement changes and could it mark or spark a really sky high push from some of these teams because we're reaching the halfway point and if you are not happy with your performance now you, you kind of have to question like okay how are we going to improve ourselves for the second half if we haven't found ourselves already yeah i i have to agree right and we also have to assess a little bit of how indostars pulled off that booyah i mean not only did they take that high ground advantage going into a very risky two to two split playing the buddy system backing up each other but from the opposite sides of that particular final circle just gave them full view of all of the action breaking down there was nobody stabbing them from the back because in that sort of a circle the last thing you want to do is be caught by the blue the damage is just insufferable out there you are going to get taken out Indostars used that to their advantage and they just squeezed everybody into a tight little pool and it was easy fishing but of course we have to hear from the players themselves as to what they have to say about the boya so let's bring this over to the indonesian stage for the interview segment Booya for Indo stars Woo! i'm so very excited because this is First Buya in the first round. Oh my god. Congratulations in those stars. And now I wanna talk to you, Russ. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. So this is your third Buya, right? So far. And how do you feel about it? Ini Buya ketiga kamu kan? Dan tim. Gimana perasaan kamu? Perasaan kami dan tim yang pasti ya senang. Terus. Tinggal nanti lanjutin lagi lima matchnya gimana bakal bisa konsisten apa enggak. Tapi kami yakin pasti bisa konsisten. We are extremely ecstatic and we hope that we can be consistent for the next matches. Okay, uh, which team is the most bothering so far? Tim mana yang paling nyebelin atau mengganggu jauh ini? Enggak uh, ada sih, sama semua. Enggak ada yang ganggu, sama rata. None of the team is really bothering the Indo Star. Okay. After this match, are you sure you can give a better performance today? Setelah match tadi, kamu yakin gak kamu bisa ngasih performance yang lebih baik di match selanjutnya? Uh, yakin 100%. Okay. A hundred percent sure. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Russ and Fighting. Don't forget, we still have a long way to go today. So we ready for the next round. Back to you, Shoutcaster.
They are very happy with the booyah. I would have assumed she would have figured that out, that they would be very happy with the booyah. I mean, I'm waiting for someone to say, like, I'm not happy with that booyah. We could have totally played that better. I mean, it's probably happened in the past, but I know the Indonesian fans and even the Indonesian teams in general got to be super happy with that to see that Indonesia is able to play at such a high level. And it's not a case of it just being a fluke. Like, the team mm -mm. genuinely played very, very well. Yeah. It was, I have to say, that final, those final two circles, incredibly difficult situations to play for the average person you're looking at elevation you have to worry about potential teleports you have to think about all the compounds so many walls how many glue walls do you have how many glue walls are you gonna have to manage against your opponents like those very crazy closed in circles mm. are something that the average player they would not be able to react to it in the way that our pro players do, right? Like they yeah. are able to execute it to the best of their ability and to see them struggle, like could you imagine us being put in that situation? We would have died a long time ago. The fact that Homer can be bought from the shop just makes me think yes. that Raz is just going an, on an all-out Homer experience out there, right? I mean, he's bringing in the active Homer, probably just buy Homer out from the shop as well. <laughs> and just tagging everybody down, slowing them down in all of their pace, allowing his partners, Aiden Dia as well as Liam, to get all of those eliminations through for the squad. In the stars are not the most aggressive team out there. They are not the highest hitters when it comes to the eliminations. But this time around, this game was very different because your big life rippers got taken taken out of the equation very, very early on. You didn't see Buriram, you didn't see teams like CGG in that final circle doing the damage because they were already hurt and down and out. Indostars, on the other hand, they managed to sweep everything away. Yes, they were not lucky. They put themselves in a position to, of course, stand the highest chance to walk away with the Booyah. But a little bit of luck did play its role in there as well as to the bigger firepower squads were just not in there to give them that sort of a challenge. But that's exactly what mm -hmm. we want to see. The survivability of a team really matters in a battle royale. Yes, absolutely. And that matchup as well, it wasn't a case of just one team dominating too. Like we saw with those eliminations, on average, teams are looking at three eliminations per player. We yeah. weren't looking at anyone hogging the kills with like seven, eight to their name. So it just goes to show how chaotic that late game was, especially with teams just trying to scramble to get into positions. I mean, the guns speak for themselves as well. The fact that you're so close to each other, any kind of AOE is really going to pay off for you. And that I have to agree, of course. The top three weapons, the Bison, Trogon, and Charge Buster. Very few of those woodpeckers managed to walk away with those eliminations this time around. It was mostly CQC, and you can and thank the fantastic use of the portal gold this time around. We saw a multiple crossovers of portal goals earlier in that second and final circle. It was insane to see how it's being abused out there on the battlefield. And the points kind of tell a good story here, right? This is not a very heavy skirmish round. 26 points for the Booyah squad. He was on that second place, only managed to walk away with 13. But overall, Indonesia should be very proud of their achievements for this game. Absolutely. Top two for the round. I know Indonesian fans are going to be hoping it continues for the rest of today. But I think the question you kind of have to worry about is, um, I don't think Buriram is going to be staying down in ninth place. I'm very sure this team is going to want to pick things up. This is very unusual for Buriram. Um, we yeah. didn't really get to see what happened with them either. They just sort of dropped out of nowhere. So I, I would have loved to have known like, what happened with Buriram to sort of cause them to drop out so fast in this game. I, do, I have no idea as well, but you know, this shows the strength of Buriram. Even if they were dead last, they still got five points and they were not last in the leaderboard of no. this particular matchup. And they've breached the 600 point mark already. In the grand scheme of things, they're 71 points clear at the top of the table against two teams that are not even playing here today. So I, it's a huge win for them. They've got five more games to, you know, just make the distance a little bit more crazier. But we also want to take a look at down the bottom of this leaderboard, 15th and 16th spot between God of Wolf as well as Toda. Toda did hot drop them. Hope to get the best out of it. They did manage to survive much longer than God of Wolf. God of Wolf mm. only took away four points, still managed to stay on top of them. There was a 13-point gap, and now that have just reduced to mere seven. God of Wolf needs to step it up, and more importantly, they have to consider changing their drop spot because they may just get hunted down by a couple of fishes today. Yeah, oh gosh, this is just such a difficult match. A difficult day, I guess. A slow start for God of Wolf. Mm. Really got to figure out how to get those points in. But we do have to talk about some of the other teams as well, right? The the closing of that gap. Like, 
we do get a couple points picked up onto Diwa. Onik, I mean Onik just doing Onik things, also picking up points themselves, so just keeping them out of reach of Diwa. I was kind of hoping we'd maybe see some kind of gap close for this top 12, but it might not end up being the case, I guess, yeah. since the, the gaps between these two teams is just so, so big. Although there is a very good chance that we could actually see Attack All Round lose their place, right? Because Indo Stars, they're now at 388 to 401. One good round or one bad round could mm. absolutely mark a change for these two teams. Um, yeah. I don't want to count out Evos though. I do think Evos is in a really good place to potentially catch up to. They've just got to try and find their footing and kind of hope that they also um, slow down attack all around in Indo Stars. Between the sixth and the 12th position, you are going to see those teams and the nameplates continuously change spots because of how close the teams are to each other. They are very, very close. From PE Sports to Onyx Olympus, well, they are tied at 315. But before we continue the overall leaderboard breakdown, these are the top three teams that we have to look out for. Stalwart, Buriram, as well as Attack All Around. And obviously, a couple of those teams are not playing in here today. So the main focus is going to be on Buriram, Attack All Around, as well as Onyx Olympus. They are, these are the three strongest teams with Attack All Around already securing two of those Buyas thus far. Buriram has mm. one and they are the most dominant team on Purgatory. And after getting kicked out of that lobby in Bermuda so early on, I expect retaliation from the two-time world champs. I kind of hope so as well, but I'm kind of wondering, our teams may be thinking about hunting down Buriram because we've already <laughs> had three weeks of play and it's like, why not? You know, maybe experiment for the final day for week three. We've still got three more weeks to go. Just yeah. just put the pedal to the metal, see how we go. Um, but I think this is going to be a big round for Attack All Round. They want to try and keep that gap between them and Indo Stars. And if there's going to be a round to do it, it's got to be this one. Well, if any teams do go ahead to take that hot drop against Buriram, we will be able to explain to people exactly why you do not poke the hornet's nest. So let's see if or not we can bring that topic <laughs> up later on. The flight path once again is going to be skewed, this time over towards the right-hand side, making places like Mount Villa, Quarry, as well as Marble Works a tad bit difficult to reach out to, but not impossible, forcing potentially skirmishes over at Brasilia and Crossroads. The hot drops are not going to be a thing here for C Triple G, who are choosing to dominate three different locations of this map. Lumberville, campsite, as well as a little bit towards the drop site of Forge. And that's exactly where Toda is. One more needs to be a dad bit careful here. Yes, very, very risky play, but high risk, high reward if they're able to, if that's able to execute. So C Triple G, I mm. think once they realize no one's there, got to be so happy getting oh all that free loot. But... But we do have a pretty big battle here, AJ. Three teams within the vicinity of one another, although it's mostly two teams and one player from Onyx scouting things out. Although I think that poor Onyx player is going to be sad in just a second if they get spotted by Flash. Mm. Bulky, though, just going to be throwing a couple pot shots. Going to reveal the position of his team now. So Flash are going to be aware of this. Indo Stars, they're going to be running into a bit oh, of a skirmish hey. in the house there, trying to catch out Evos, but unfortunately not able to get the immediate down. But I am... Am I God? Might uh, not be a God very, very soon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. In the stars, fighting the first blood, and it is against your brothers from Evos Divine. Oh. A little unfortunate if you're an Evos Divine fan. But check this out. Expand, trying to crash the party here. A potential three-way fight between Expand and the two Indonesian squads. It could also potentially open up a window of opportunity for... Evos Divine to find a little bit of recovery, maybe bait expand in for a battle, and then they back away for the revival. Now, a couple of Dinoculars here. Onik did manage to scan out one player from the side of Flash, and that's by Gardu, because he is stuck in a very sticky situation here. Try to see if or not there are any opponents in front of him. Spots out there's just one, and takes a chance against him. But 18D of finding Xroy just means that Expand cannot fully commit to the battle against the Indonesians as well. And the, and the battle continues here, AJ, because we do have Flash down to two players. It's just Shin and Yabin. And both of these players, if they can, they want to split up. They want someone to try and get the revive for the team. But it's going to be so hard with attack all round on their tail. They are hunting. They are looking for elimination. Speaking of eliminations, though, Indostar is going to be chasing down Expand, eliminating Cobra. And actually, it looks like Flash were able to get Karoro there. Crime going down as well to Indostar's. 
Kuroro fi being finished off there by Flash. We, we have two team fights happening back to back, and it looks like Endo Stars are going to be our elimination leaders with four eliminations. Fantastic start for this team, especially after getting our first Booyah today. Uh, team Flash and a 1v2 Yanbin. Bison oh. just couldn't help him get that knock. Shindo running away for his dear life. The portal go had already been used earlier on by this guy just to get away from that sticky situation, and therefore I believe he's all out of options just need to run away on foot and hope and pray there's another team right in front of him that gets baited into a battle to stop his pursuers and he gets to go on a revival spree. Axel, on the other hand, going to be caught out by Leem XM8. More than enough to shut down Axel. Expand loses yet another player. What a crushing blow to the Malaysian squad so early in this purgatory match. So unfortunate, but they are able to get some revives off. So, so it looks like X-Ray is going to be bringing the team back in one by one. But switching on over here to C Triple G, one more running into Dewa. Although I do believe it's just him by himself. So very ballsy player, going to be scouting out for the team. But it looks like his teammates are going to be joining the fray very shortly. So if Dewa do decide to turn around and engage into one more, we could be seeing some eliminations very soon. But it looks like... Are they sticking around? They're thinking about it. In the meantime, though, Evos going to be trying to go and skirmish here. Poor Angod, though, yet again, he actually got eliminated very early on. Is able to actually win that very close battle, but will finally get taken down. His teammates, though, are gone. They've just left him. They're using him as vision, as bait. But Ray, going to try and go onto WAG. The team is there. They got their teammate flying in as well, Aim God. He won't have any items, and he might actually end up being bait for the team. So if WAG do try to snipe him down, maybe that's when Evos decide to go. He's got a sort of really solid gun in his hand. The AWM. Um, oh, wait. Probably his WAG, just with a better defensive spot, the portal goal is going to be used to cut down the distance. And a great reposition by Abax. The Woodpecker straight to the head. Goes down already. WAG possibly crushed here. Ooh. With Dolphin the only survivor. Trying his best to patch himself up. And it looks like Evos Divine will find him. And WAG make an early exit from Purgatory. Oh, so unfortunate for WAG. No placement points at all. This is going to be a pretty devastating round for this team, especially since they are a top performer. Dewa, though, in the meantime, not going to be too happy themselves as C Triple G, CosQ, feasting on this team, getting all the eliminations. I believe we've got one more player left here for Dewa, but this team is on the brink of elimination. If he could somehow dodge, that would be amazing. But Virus being caught out by Peter. And I think this might almost be it for Dewa. Just absolutely crippled for this early game. I'm not 100% sure how their mid game is going to look, but it looks like Bro Ram, though, get high, going absolutely crazy in this team fight, trying to go for a elimination. Funa rushing forward for the team. They do still have vision of extra. They know where he is. They're ready to jump on him as well. Wasana needs to be picked up on the ground, waiting for his team. And actually, Moshi's going to be caught down as well. So get high and Funa going to have to try and turn this around if possible, but they will get the pickup. And it should be fine here for Buriram. Yeah, good counter by Buriram. Expand just did not have the right number of players in there for that battle at the same time. Buriram sticking together and annihilating Expand's chances from a and Day finishes off the chances totally. Expand out in 11. Two back-to-back -back game now that the Malaysian champs have been struggling with. And it looks like Onik is going to be ending the round in 10th place as well. Gardu trying to just be that last hope for the team. Unfortunately, not in a great place to try and bring the team back into the fold. So we're now down to our top nine teams in this round, AJ. And so far, our top performers are still in the game. Trying to grab some of those points at the moment, though. We're just going to be watching Todak's point of view. We do have a couple teams in the vicinity, though. C, Triple G, and Flash. And obviously, we know C, Triple G is the major, major threat for both of these teams in this battle. The question is, what's the pathing going to be for C, Triple G? Do they continue to go around the outside, or, they, or are they going to be jumping into the compound? I actually think they do jump into Todak. We're not seeing this point of view, but C, Triple G looking to just try and get those free eliminations. And, and unless Todak have a way to get out of this, this might just be a team elimination. This might just be two times in a row that Todak does better than expand. Kill. Great place by Todak. To keep C Triple G at bay. And oh, one more. 2,100 coins in hand. Looks like he's going to buy that the whole squad. 
He's going to have to, but that Boom. was absolutely insane. We had C Triple G going in for the skirmish against Turdak, but Indo Stars coming out of nowhere to finish off that fight and even send C Triple G out. I think that's going to be a major play for this round because now all of a sudden, a, a lot of the players to see for Triple G will not have sufficient inventories. And that's going to make it so hard, especially going into this late game. And AJ, I don't know what's happening. I need to know what Indo Stars is drinking today because they are on fire. And it's only game number two. It's game number two and probably a repeat for the final four games later on as well. What a oh. shot with the RGS 15 virus goes down as well. My goodness, this is a different level right now from EVOS Divine. Portal go used to get to the other side as well. And this time, Team Flash will pose to be the problem that Divine needs to solve. I don't know if they have the solution for this because unfortunately for Flash, the team has just been constantly reviving. Dareworg is going to be eliminated in 8th place while this fight is happening. Flash going to try and get that angle onto EVOS. They haven't quite gotten the elimination though, but they did chip away at the health bar. But looks like Shin, uh -oh. first player to go down up against Abax. This might be problematic, unfortunately, because once you start losing players, the numbers disadvantage is really going to start to kick in. Although Ray is down for EVOS, they're going to have to try and consider, do they want to go for the pickup or not Artemis? All alone, right next to Evos. We do have Abax actually portaling out, trying to go for the hits onto Artemis. No clear shots, but looks like yeah. Evos. They are down two players, and Aim God almost getting caught there by Yambin. Thankfully, he is going to be able to dodge out of there, but he will have to think about this. Is he going to make that turn? He doesn't get the immediate headshot. They're going to try and go for the battle, but it's going to be Yanbin that wins the 1v1. Oh, beautiful stuff out of Flash to just hold their own against Evos Divine. But it doesn't matter Yanbin. how long you hold on to your hats here. Because here comes Buriram as well to stick their noses in where it just doesn't belong. Because retaliation is needed after the early exit from Bermuda. Do they pick up the point? They start things yeah. off against Yanbin himself who was securing the eliminations for the side of Flash. One down, a couple of more to go. And Funa is not waiting for the rest of his team members to arrive. He just wants to sweep up everything on his own. Oh gosh, this is going to be massive here. AJ is Boriram cleaning up Flash. There's nowhere to go. Volley just hiding behind this clue wall, praying oh, that Funa beauty. lets him survive. But yeah, Funa, boom, straight to the head. Eight eliminations for Boriram. This team, I don't know what's happened in the first round, but they have definitely woken up for round number two. Nah, it's probably just needed to go to the toilet or something. And they were like, can we just like, just, just get kicked out early, bro? I just need to use the ah, loot. Come, come <laughs> I, I can't on, hold I'm it on anymore. I... <laughs> <laughs> and they're right back in it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, you, got, you can't hold it in, okay? It's problematic, okay? I mean, Doctors to, warn to be... you against that. I, I understand. I can't think when I need to go to the bathroom either. So <laughs> we do see our next circle. And at the moment, we are only seeing one team camped out in the middle, right? We've got mm. attack all around camped in very nicely in the field. Indo stars could be coming in towards that top right section. But at the moment, no team is in a position to go for any gate, any kind of gatekeeping. It's more likely going to be these teams wrestling each other, trying to get into this circle. And look at that, Fruna. Good day, mate. Going back home, see you next round. All I know is there are still three teams from Thailand, and there are only three teams from Thailand playing today. They're all surviving. One Indonesian squad right in front of Buriram United, and it looks like Indo Stars in a lot of trouble because retaliation is needed from the two time world champs. And Liam beats up a fantastic one, and that is the power of Buriram. Here comes a Riptide Rhythm as well. 18 to year, yet another glue wall right in front of him. Backs away, assault rifle in hand, and buys himself a few seconds he's the bait for the squad to allow the other two players to survive oh 18 dear being chased by an entire team of bro ramp he does finally go down but it did create an opportunity for indo stars to get some of their survivors out of that fray but hang on a minute though doesn't matter anyway kachil has been pursued funa almost getting the elimination off indo stars even though they had a fantastic start this late game situation for this team is going to be absolutely impossible they still have one player actually sitting towards oh. the northern side of the circle but heaven forbid this man finds Find a way in because he has a long path ahead of him. Speaking of paths, so see Triple G remaining with two players getting a kill there onto attack all round. Otana going to try and find a way out, find an angle for himself. But with three players up here for attack all round, it's going to be a really tough one here for C Triple G. It's actually down to their final player as Peter gets eliminated. 
Oatna, if this man is somehow going to be able to three versus four, it would be a play for the day. Oh, my goodness. I thought this was going to be an all-out Thai showdown in that final circle, but God of Wolf is holding on strong as well. C Triple G with the final survivor managing to walk away for oh, the time being. Caught. No vending machine in or around him. Ah, goodness me. Wasana is there for the damage. Bye-bye, sir. One more shot needed. RGS 50 cannot reach that shot. And Wasana's going to solve that problem by just getting a tad bit closer. But tagged up by attack all around NGOW at the same time. Wasana now firing right back. And that gives Otna a couple of more seconds to breathe. Oatna is praying a tackle round actually helps him out and eliminates Bury Ram. That would be the ideal situation for this player, but unfortunately ends up being the first one to go down as he was all by himself. But it looks like Get High was actually clipped in this fray. It does get picked up by the team and they're going to have to try and heal him back up before they go into this final circle here, AJ, because this is a bit of an awkward one if it yeah. does go towards that bottom hill because that run for Bury Ram is not ideal. You don't have any cover running down. You will effectively be sitting ducks as you run down that hill so they're praying that this is going to be more of a northern circle but for the rest of the teams on the bottom of the hill they want it to be on flat ground i thought the Indostars player was going for the vending machine revive but it looks like he's just dead broke just choosing to tank the circle which is pretty impossible at this point of time we're in circle number five this has got to hurt but he's still oh, hanging on circle. for his dear life right behind Buriram. He can't even make an aggressive approach. He has to continuously patch himself up. How many more medkits he has in his hands, we don't know. But we'll have to wait and see. God of Wolf, on the other hand, one of the surviving teams, Raz, a sliver of health. And it looks like he still has a medkit on him to patch himself right back up. And super quiet. And this is the strategy of Indostars. All the time we see this happening, they just stay quiet at the very edge of the circle and get as many placement points of, for, as possible for themselves, which is brilliant if you ask me. Yes. All right. We do have a portal thrown up there by Boriram. They are ready to go to that portal when it's time. They're going to actually try and hide behind Smart the hay play. bale. Raz, I mean, this is the best thing this man can hope uh -oh. for, but he's going to have to tank that blue zone. Bury Ram though, what's the play? When are they going to go down? Because they're just going to be at the mercy of God of Wolf and Indostars unless they move. It looks like Moshi has already moved behind that hay bale. So slowly bringing players in one by one. Bury Ram right in the middle, yeah. literally playing piggy in the middle between Attack All Round and God of Wolf. And look at God of Wolf. They're slowly creeping in, but Attack All Round actually just hiding behind the boulder. Very worried about cover, slowly creeping in. God of Wolf actually in the most advantageous position because they have so many walls to work with slowly coming in Bury Ram fighting up against a tackle round God of Wolf shooting up from the outside I think time is running out here AJ for some of these teams yeah 10 blue wall melters right in front of Bury Ram forcing them to get out of the defense and that puts them in a sticky situation they can't rush on out just like that an attack all around takes good advantage but get high gets right back up unfortunately couldn't do much from that Moshi M82B still barricaded behind his blue walls nobody else attacking the team of attack all around just yet God of Wolf just waiting for the opportunity moment and now is the time they have to swoop on in for the attack but he's as down they have to patch himself right back up and this gives attack all around a good advantage it's not over yet here aj it's two versus three attack all round can absolutely turn things around if god of wolf missed some critical shots so far they are slowly oh, taking out bulky and that's gonna be it aid. that's it booyah gonna be going to god of wolf Massive booyah for this team as well because we spoke before this game. This team mm. needed to get points, and this was the match where they needed to get those points. Yeah, if Husky was here, he'd be losing his mind. He loves it every time a Vietnam squad gets the booyah. Oh. We get to see Yun Sol's face and her beautiful questions that she throws to these boys. I have never seen someone think as quick as that <laughs> lady on her feet. I mean, she's asking those questions. She's coining them in her head. She's watching those matches. She's not just sitting behind just eating some sweets. She's absolutely tuned in to the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia. And she's passionate about Vietnam reaching up to the top. And God of Wolf has just brought the camera right back so that we can see her magic. But of course, let's talk about the magic that worked against Buriram. They took the portal go. They wanted to make a great entrance and they moved straight into the middle of the circle. And that proved to be the worst mistake that they could make. As opposed to just, of course, putting out that portal go and moving towards God of Wolf's position because they had a good defensive spot. The problem here is you don't know who you're going up against. That could have
have been attack all around. That could have been see through. You had just absolutely a blind in these matches. They made a choice, and that was a terrible choice because that was about 10 to 15 blue wall melters being chucked at them by not one but two teams at the very same time. Yeah. They tried to retaliate with those grenades, just could not work, and that forced Buriram to scramble at the very final second. And that just totally ruined their chances for the Booyah. But God of Wolf, though, they had the smarter option picked out for themselves. They saw these two teams do battle. They helped out attack all around by chucking in all of those blue wall melters. But they did not get involved in the gunfights because, I mean, it wasn't their fight in the first place. They waited for attack all around to do that damage, get hurt themselves as well, and then swooped on in for the finisher. Brilliant IQ play from the Vietnamese squad absolutely i mean they 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 played the game correctly now i think in the case of Buriram, i think there are multiple thought processes we can kind of look at right because it, it was a really tough choice on deciding where you wanted to throw the portal and obviously the correct decision would have been actually to go onto god of wolf because of their compound but i wonder and this is it might be an unpopular opinion mm. but i kind of wonder if Buriram they decided to go in the center because they believe that they would have been able to take on both teams because mechanically Boriram outskill a lot of these teams in their skirmishes, especially in the late game skirmishes when you start looking at CQC. So maybe they thought, okay, we can quickly eliminate one team and then we're going to deal with the other. Because that skirmish in the late game, I kind of felt like it took a little bit too long. We're so used to seeing Boriram be able to sweep teams in a matter of seconds. Yeah. It took way too long. And then all of a sudden, it just created a perfect opportunity for God of Wolf to just sort of come in from the outside and be like, hey, we're coming in from the back. This game is ours. The, the, the only thing that I can think of is, first of all, that was definitely a mistake in decision making. But second mm -hmm. of all, was that a detriment to the team? I think not, because that mistake was made so early in the competition and it's being made in the knockout stage of the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia, not the world stage in itself. And because of the RNG that is produced in a game of Battle Royale, making this mistake this early just shows that Buriram is not going to be making that mistake again this is not a team that does the same nonsense twice in a row right they will never ever get make that which makes them even more stronger but the highlight of our day let's bring the camera over to yun Sol and hear her beautiful questions with the boys hello everybody welcome to our vietnamese booyah interview after the match right next to me is god of wolf dian can you say hello to the audience please Xin chào Dian, thì bạn có thể gửi lời chào đến các bạn khán giả được không ạ? À? Hello mọi người. Rumba hả? Không. Hi everyone. Then first of all, congratulations on your first Buya in the match today. Then just a simple questions. How do you feel right now? Thì chúng ta mở đầu câu phỏng vấn bằng một câu hỏi rất là đơn giản nha. Thì bạn đang cảm thấy như thế nào ạ? À? Dạ em thấy nó cũng bình thường, không có gì đâu. Lúc nào được Buya cũng bình thường như thế này luôn hả? Đúng rồi. Ok, thì mình cũng xin được chúc mừng Dayan cũng như đồng đội của mình đã lấy được chiếc Buya ngày hôm nay nha Then he felt, after the Buya he felt normal, normally after every Buya scenes This is the second time God of Wolf received the Buya I remember But he always feel really normal, I don't know why And then, how would you rate your performance of your teammates today? Thì không biết là hôm nay Dayan sẽ chấm bao nhiêu điểm cho cái um, phần trình diễn của đồng đội mình nhỉ? Dạ, tại vì mới bắn có hai game mà cho nên là chưa chấm điểm được chắc phải đợi 6 game xong. So currently he cannot rate the performance right now because it's just only two games. Maybe after six game he might figure it out how many points he will give to his teammate. Moving to on our next questions, how does Dian feel about um, the intensity of the match today, especially when you're having a fight with um, Ruram and attack all around? Thì không biết là hôm nay Dan đang cảm thấy như thế nào về cái suất nhiệt khi mà mình đang phải uh, chống lại hai đội là Buddha và Attack All Around Khi mà mình nhớ là lúc đấy God of War đứng cho mình một cái vị trí rất là đẹp á Thì cái pha đó mọi người mọi người tính là sẽ xử lý như thế nào? Dạ pha đó thì cứ bình tĩnh mà bắn thôi tại vì vào đó đâu có biết là đội nào đó Cứ xử lý thôi He felt like just every normal team all of the things that he have to do is just stay there, keep calm and then waiting for the right opportunity and then they just jump right in and having a fight with all of the team because he doesn't know any of the team in it. Then in the last combat, I remember there was there was a, there was two person who was being knocked out by attack all around. Were you afraid you're gonna lose the combat? 
thì mình nhớ là đến cái pha khúc cuối lúc đấy là có đó quốc trong đó có hai người bị hạ thì mọi người có sợ là cái tình thế lúc đó nó sẽ bị lật lại không dạ không em tự tin mà em làm được mẹ cứ nhớ cái pha cuối là đây là nữ văn một cái giấy rất là để vắng hơi cái tim dạ em quăng chết lũ chết hai người có một cái mà rất là thắc mắc là tại sao đây luôn luôn quăng nét rất là chuẩn không biết là bạn đã luyện tập bao lâu và như thế nào vậy dạ em ném theo cảm tính thôi chú chú không chú thôi so in the last performance Darren isn't afraid of all that he's gonna lose the combat because he's really confident about his play style. And I've, I'll, I like, I've also asked him like, how does he train himself to use the dynamite really good? He just like, he just throw it out like his play, like his favorite thing to do. So it doesn't make any sense that if he practices or not. <laughs> Then thank you so much for your interview with me today. Then we'll see you later on. Man's ready for the next game. What do you mean? What? <laughs> This lady? She's so amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was, look, I was more concerned about the players because at the end of the day, we're watching the players, okay? Not the interview lady, we're looking at the players. It's all look. about the questions because the players clearly okay. are the shyest creatures in the world, okay? <laughs> There's are. a good reason why they just play video games behind the screen. They. <laughs> I mean, when you ask them to say hi to the camera, they're like, hi, and that's it. <laughs> How do you feel? Good. <laughs> I guess it, it, it's a tad bit more difficult when they're trying to avoid eye contact with the host. But of course, let's bring the focus to Deanne and his beautiful performance. Five eliminations, 1,482 on the damage. No headshots, but who's complaining? Nine knockdowns allowed all of the other players to, of course, take good advantage of their opponents out there on the battlefield as well. With Beaston in his hands, chucking those grenades. Alvara awakened. You saw those clusters being dropped. And one in one of that situation, especially the final engagement against attack all around it was that cluster that did attack all around in yes actually right it was that one cluster two players game winning move right there okay god of wolf i i kind of want to ask you this question actually aj like mm -hmm. how far do you think god of wolf is going to go today because they've they've proven that they got they're able to keep up mm. with some of these teams in that late game yeah. of course you know it wasn't them directly engaging the teams they kind of come in from the backside. but do you actually think god of wolf are better than what we have seen thus far because i do think this team they they don't play as if they don't know what they're doing like there is definitely coordination involved yeah. you can see their movements they they really move like a pack of wolves that's very organized Like, what do you what do you think about God of Wolf as a team? I, I think God of Wolf definitely stands a good chance to continue performing well. This is not their best map. Their best map is Alpine, and guess what? It's coming up right after this. Their mm. third best map is Kalahari. I say third instead of second because second best is exactly what we just witnessed at Purgatory. So there's a high chance we get to see some back-to-back -back performance here. And we did also mention earlier on that they were about 70 points behind catching up with the position right in front of them. That is against Heaven in the 13th spot and they've now just cut that down to around 50 so fantastic for them that's obviously going to pump up the adrenaline a tad bit but they just have to make sure they don't allow all of that adrenaline to get to their heads as well because that can force out some unforced errors that we don't want to see mm, yeah i think there is going to be an opportunity for the team to sort of come down from that cloud nine as well because we are going to go for a bit of a break later on just to give everyone sort of five minutes maybe speak to their coaches, especially for the teams that haven't been doing well today, you're definitely going to want to have that moment to sort of recoup and think like, okay, yeah. what's happened today? What do we need to fix? Um, and what's our goal for today? Like, mm. I think the teams, I'm, I'm not sure about you, AJ, but I kind of feel like some of these teams, and I think we saw in some of the interviews when they were asked about their expectations for points for the day. Yep. Some of these teams are sort of just coming in and, and getting their points. They haven't set themselves a goal. How important do you actually feel it is for a team to come into a tournament day and to have at least a soft goal mm. for your performance that day? I, I think it depends on who the team is, right? Because you really have to acknowledge <laughs> where you stand in the overall grand scheme of things. And before we go there though, the, I mean, props to God of Wolf 
I mean, yes. equalizing points with the two-time world champs, Buriram, on this map is very, very admirable. Not a lot of those eliminations, but it is just enough in terms of helping them climb up the overall leaderboard. Attack all around as well as Buriram. They got into that final circle. Buriram making that one slight mistake, but still managing to finish on top because of their aggressive gameplay and the points that they picked up from the very start. Towards the bottom, let's ignore that. We hop on over to the overall stats. We want to look at God of Wolf and their climb towards the top and they are right behind heavy once again 54 points of a difference heavy's not playing today so whether or not god of war will be able to pick up 54 more points in the next four games highly probable as long as they don't get kicked out within the first few minutes yes because god of war got 22 points for that round and i actually i i kind of feel like the god of war like 22 is Definitely like the upper echelon for points for this team. But if, if they can somehow pick things up, I, I really think God of Wolf can close it out and it maybe even almost match heavy. Yeah. I do think this team has a lot of potential. They've just got to sort of figure out, okay, how do we maintain this consistency yep. now that we've proven that we're able to score those big numbers? Yeah, I mean, because at the end of the day, we have to look at who God of Wolf is as a squad and their average eliminations is really nothing much to scream about as well. They average around five, six eliminations per game. But let's see if or not they can bump that up later on. We're going to take a five minute break. We'll be right back. With you. How'd you like them apples?
fire! How'd you like them apples? Welcome back everyone to the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia 2024. We've completed our first two games of the day, meaning we have four more to go. And so far, Booyahs have not gone to our top dogs. First, oh, yeah. Booyah picked up by Indo Stars, and second, Booyah was picked up by God of Wolf. The question I have is, are we going to continue to see the underdogs pick up the Booyahs, or will Booram and the Tackle Round come in, Z Triple G come in, and reclaim their Booyahs? Because they kind of still want those points. You know, even though yeah. they're high up on that leaderboard, you still want those points. If you can somehow move up one more position, that's still more prize money for you for the league stage. I will, with just two games in play, C Triple G has managed to sweep back their number two spot for themselves. Reverse Red as well as Stalwart can do absolutely nothing about it as they are in Group B. They'll have to take a break. They can only do something about this in three weeks. So, mm. that, that's a lot of time to ponder all of your mistakes. Okay, we can't call them mistakes, right? Because these teams still have been absolutely putting the hurt on the other squads out there. Once again, Attack All Around is currently sitting in the fifth spot. And they are a solid 106 points behind the team that's in the fourth place. And that's another Thailand squad. That's Stalwart Esports. So, a lot of hustle done thus far. It seems like, you know, we are not just seeing some top teams. We are seeing teams in totally different leagues of play altogether, Danny. But it's only three weeks, right? We've still got three more weeks of play. And oh, yeah. I mean, to, to see these teams already pick up this many points in three weeks of play, we could definitely see some big changes mm. after, um, after this week, right? Three more weeks of play. But at the end of the day, it comes down to the players. How many of those points can they get? Yeah. And how much... Do they have control in a lot of these games? Because we do know in a game of Free Fire, there are going to be elements that are out of your control. You don't get to decide where some of these teams drop. You know, obviously there are favorite drop points, but on occasion you're going to be seeing some hot drops and that's going to be something that you're not expecting. You have to win those matchups. There's, there is luck involved. So for these teams, if anything, you've got to aim for that consistency, aim for a good score, and ultimately aim for top 12. Because again, I keep stressing this, and it's the most important point of the knockout stage, right? Yeah. Bottom six teams get knocked out. If you're not top 12, you don't even make it to the final leg of the competition. So for the teams that are from 13th to 18th, look, I said this from the start, Put the pedal to the metal. Don't wait for the last minute to get your point. Get those points early and keep them. And speaking of drop as well, WAG forcing a couple of teams to drop their ranks as they managed to slide into that eighth spot on the overall leaderboard. I mean, they are now 44 points behind EVOS Divine. That's not an impossible catch, but EVOS Divine has been one of those teams that have been performing pretty consistently. Although God of Wolf did manage to just take a booyah for themselves, they're still 71 points from catching up to the 12th position on the overall leaderboard. Expecting 71 points out of a team like God of Wolf, which averages about 50 points at their best on a good day. It seems to be a lot to ask for. But once again, this is the final day of play before we take a two-week break. Perhaps they want to just give their all. I mean, if you're going to get tired by the end of the day, who really cares, right? As long as you can smile when you go to bed tonight. Yeah, you got to be happy with your performance. If you end a play day and you're not happy with how you played, that's got something you've got to look into. You got to look into what you did and why you're not happy. Now, Alpine, next map for the day. You know, a lot of teams, are, some teams like this map, some teams don't. Definitely a preferential kind of thing. But going into Alpine, I want to know who are your favorites going into this matchup. Uh, who are my favorites or who are the teams that are performing like insane monkeys out there? 
Well, we're seeing it on the screen right now. <laughs> Our top performing teams for Alpine. Go ahead, AJ. Yep, Buriram stalwart as well as CGG stalwart's not going to be playing. So attack all around takes the spot once again. All three Thai teams that are in play today are going to be very dangerous out there on the battlefield. We did see them make it towards the final circle in the previous game at Purgatory as well. You can expect the same at Alpine, but I am expecting the unexpected. I'm expecting the underdog run to continue for some of these squads. I am expecting, you know, the worst of scenarios to hit the top flight teams so that those who are struggling to get into the top 12 can have a better shot at at survival here. You're talking about teams like God of Wolf. You're talking about Day Y United Apollo. I, I don't know if I want to add Toda into that list as well, but we should be throwing them into the list. Albeit Toda needs 97 points just to get into top 12. Four games, 97 points. The math does not math, especially looking at how Toda has been performing recently. Albeit, there has been a slight improvement from, you know, less than five points. They are making it to the 10s and the 12s, which is pretty decent. Mm. So it's going to be down to the teams. How are they going to play on this map? It's going to be a very exciting one, folks. But Alpine, game number three. The teams did have a five-minute break as well alongside you and me. So let's see what kind of changes we're going to be expecting going into this matchup. Are teams going to divert away from their regular drop points? Are we going to be seeing some hot drops? Because we really, I kind of feel like today, mm. we haven't really seen a lot of hot drops. We've, see, we've seen a lot of safe play yeah. from teams in Group A and C, which I thought was quite surprising. I think it was very evident mm. when we were playing mm. on Bermuda because on Bermuda, you are so used to seeing teams being eliminated from start to finish, but we didn't see many teams being eliminated until way into that mid game, which I thought was really peculiar. Yeah, you can thank the two week break for that. They all know that they do not want to suffer the consequences of early skirmishes and early exits here. And then, of course, suffer all of those thoughts for two weeks. They have chosen to take a slightly slower approach to that final circle, which is good, which is basically equaling chaos towards the uh -oh. third to fourth circles. But looking at these drops here, Onyx as well as Toda, that's not going to fare too well for the Malaysian squad. Onyx pretty and, hungry as well. And God of Wolf and Expand? Mm. We're looking at two potential hot drops here, AJ. So this yeah. is going to be a really exciting one. I think God of Wolf motivated off that last round, looking to try and go for more. But Onyx, though, going up against Hodak, not going to be too happy at losing Gardu there because they're now down to one player. And Kiba goes down as well. So that's going to be massive for the team. Switching on over to Expand, though. We'll see how this team deals with God of Wolf. Who has actually got the better inventory? That's what I want to know here. Yeah, it looks like Expand's the one taking this hot drop against God of Wolf. They have struggled for two games back to back and they want to go back to their winning ways. And they know that in order to get the adrenaline pumping through their veins once again, they need to pick up some solid points. So taking a hot drop against a team that's struggling to get into the top 12, it's a little nasty, but it gets hmm. the job done. In the meantime, it looks like Onik is getting toasted by a couple of fishes. Raja manages to take Jack out of the equation. Expand on the other hand, forced behind a tight little corner here over at Docks. God of Wolf taking over this compound little by little but the question is can they also secure a little bit of that high ground advantage to get this information off of expand is going to be the question expand playing the game of info instead setting out the uav to scan out a couple of players should be shot out of the air in a little bit but not before giving away the positions of two Oh, but look at this, though. Indostar sticking their nose into Todak's business oh, no. and actually going in and getting the secure onto the team. So uh, I think Todak, you kind of want to get out of here if possible. The team looks like they are running away. They got the revive off, though. So one of their players is actually flying down back into the game. Indostars, though, they haven't found anybody that they can actually go and get an elimination on. So this might be the saving grace for Todak. I think if you're Todak and you lose one player, but the rest of your team gets out, you're, you're going to be happy with that engagement. Looks like Traps may have been spotted out here, forced to use his blue wall Whee! as Code Shield has found a really good angle to start working working Traps down next to the tree. But Code Shield, though, 24 health, does finally go down there thanks to 18. What? And actually, Big Green goes down as well. Oh, Todak is going to be dropping yeah. two players here. Very unfortunate. They do have one more player going to the vending machine. Traps and Fikri are coming back in. 
but they will lose Noki here possibly. Yeah, he, that was a very smart play coming through from 18 Deer. Instead of reloading his gun, he just swapped out to the Mag 7, went in for the spray. It was easy. Takedown onto Fikri. And now one more. It's Noki. Noki. Good Tatsuya burst, but going up against Kochil with a bison. Oh. Noki says goodbye as well. In the meantime, off screen. And now on screen, Expand continues the skirmish against God of Wolf. Two players down on the ground, but it's God of Wolf on the back foot as they try their very best to get out of this sticky situation. They've already lost 12, two players. He's up bringing both of them right back into play before trying to move away from this combat. Either way, that insurance policy has already been purchased. It was a good attack initially by God of Wolf to secure the area, but they just could not find the finisher. They managed to get the knocks, but not the elimination onto Expand. That's going to be very painful for God of Wolf because they're now back to a fresh game. They're going to have to get, the, get their inventories back onto their players. But I think for Expand, they've got to be really happy with how things have played out. Because look at this, D. Kung has been spotted by Dewa. So that's going to oh be my. one of God of Wolf's players that just got revived. Eliminated yet again. And here we go. We've got Death uh -oh. as well from God of Wolf being taken down. Second elimination here by Dewa. AJ, I think this game might just be over for God of Wolf because if they keep getting eliminated like this, there is no way they can get a proper reset going. One more, ma'am. One more. You never know exactly what could happen. Now, the problem here is Alpine's a very small map. Now, no matter wherever you get revived and you drop back in, you're probably going to come across a couple of players, especially when there are still 12 teams alive and kicking out there. You are the 12th team. You only have one man left out there on the map. So any bit of action out there at this point of time could possibly just end up as free points on the opposite side. But he was divine in a terrible situation. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Attack all around, hitting them from the back. And look at this, WAG making their way as well. A rock and a hard place and absolute destruction. They holds the EVOS divine. And it looks like Peter starts things off by taking ABEX out of the equation. Aim got with an instant revive off of that pocket market. Divine in a lot of trouble. C Triple G stopping by to say hello. <gasps> Oh, goodness me, this cannot get any oh. worse for this squad. WAG might also stick their nose where it doesn't belong either, AJ. We could be looking at a massive three-way battle for these teams. Oh, my gosh. Ray going down for EVOS. EVOS, unfortunately, going to be losing more players. Uh -oh. Today also goes down, caught by Krillin. Oh, this is terrible. WAG just getting three eliminations here. C, Triple G, get one more. Aim God is down. Onik actually going to be losing Gare to Turdak on the other side of the map, and 18 Deer fighting into Turdak as well. So it's not just the skirmish, we're looking at another one on the other side of the map as well. Looks like we are looking at Expand playing up against Flash, and I do suspect it may have been Expand what? to be the ones to apply the pressure here, but so far things are not looking too good. Both of these teams playing into that blue zone. They continue to fight here. This is going to be a very costly battle. Oh, goodness me, he had an open shot. He just walked past the player, but Artemis and Wally, they are able to secure the fights here. And scrambling for survival. X-Roy splitting up from his partner, trying to be the bait for the squad, but he does reach a vending machine. Revival should come through for Expand, but that was a almost slip up there for the Expand squad. WAG hanging on for their dear lives, this time catching one player who has managed to stray away from the rest of the pack on the side of C Triple G, but the instant revive is there, so nothing much for them to worry about. Otna right on top, WAG circling from the bottom. A couple of grenades sent up towards Otna could get Get them yet another point. Homer sent out just to get the information as to where in the world this guy is hiding. They'll have to walk quite far out to pick up that go portal oh, to use it to get onto the roof. And another player going down on the side of Expand, X-Roy. I think Expand are in a very precarious position in this matchup. We saw so many players going down. And this was off of them having a re relatively good early game as well. They got the yeah. three eliminations and then just to lose all their players here, they have to also go for a reset themselves. Attack all around though. Very quiet all game. We haven't seen much happening for them. Just basically a free looting game, trying to get into a great position as that circle gets smaller and smaller. But uh, speaking of smaller and smaller, we have mm. a couple teams outside the circle looking for Fikri, Indo Stars. We've seen this team be extremely hungry today and expand, we, as we see, 11th place in this matchup. Look at Fikri just constantly playing up on this rooftop, trying to just use his portals wherever possible, buying time so that his team can be left alone. He's going to be all right. His team is basically free here. Although, oh, wait a minute. They're in the territory of C Triple G. 
I don't think they've been spotted. <gasps> Speaking as long of as they don't get spotted, it might be okay. Let's see if they can stay hidden here. C Triple G walking outside of the circle. What's the plan here, <laughs> for boys? I think they are on a hunting mission. And... Maybe hoping to gatekeep here? I mean, the R1 can be used as Raja brings that revival in. Abex recovering a tad bit of his health outside of the circle. E was divine. Just tempting fate here with the uh, maneuver. And Buriram, on the other hand, just circling around Carizal. And might just be able to pick up a few other points here off of Team Flash. Wally! Funa! Get it! Man. That aim, but barely able to connect those double shots for the knock. Gosh, Volley, so lucky he wasn't actually one tap there. So at least for Flash, because they have a very nice compound, they do have a pretty good way of sort of holding off Buriram unless they do try to go for the commitment. Get high, though. He's going to be high up on the roof, but he gets taken down by Yinbin. Oh my goodness, get high. Luckily, Wasana will be able to pick him back up. And Yambin has been punished by Funa. So Flash going to be losing one of their players from the get-go. And now they are going to be invaded by Buriram because they are now free to oh, come in oh, on that rooftop. And I think this might just be it here, AJ. Flash, they thought they had the defensive advantage, but just the fact that portals exist, it makes it so difficult for some of these teams to feel comfortable within those compounds. Turek in the meantime, though, not happy themselves, losing Fikri. Raja incredibly low himself, actually still in the middle of the fray. Trap's going to have to try and go for that reset for his team, trying to find a vending machine. But oh, again, just a difficult game for Turek. We just haven't seen this team have any kind of oh easy my. early games. Always being caught by somebody. Oh, that's such a GG. And oh, he was divine. Could more. not nick off that one point. One more. Takes the snipe from afar. M82B. The vending machine was right in front of him. But he saw his life flash beyond his eyes. And Soda, although they do get taken out early, three consecutive games now, they have performed better than Expand. Expand really needs to think what they had to break fast earlier because clearly it's making them sleepy. This team is off form. Mm. Lots to think about for these teams. Speaking of thinking, we might have to see Evos reconsider what happens here because they're just running to the eye, into vision range here for C Triple G. So both teams are aware of each other's presence, both hiding behind boulders as well. And because they threw a couple of those gunshots as well, they may have alerted some nearby teams of their position too. Looks like C Triple G, they're going to be going onto that portal to move towards a better position on the high ground. They do see G'day. So both of these teams just going to continue on running. No skirmish. Interesting decision for these squads. Actually going to be prioritizing compounds instead. So now that COSQ is in a better spot, looks like they're going to try and prevent EVOS from coming up onto this high ground. They're going to fly over instead. They're oh, very smart. risky play, but no one's being punished. Yeah, C Triple G though. Might just be ambushed by Indostars who see exactly what's happening. Raz with the Woodpecker sends out the Homer first. Homer tags up one player. C Triple G has to back away. They have to deal with the circle as well. And Indostars, instead of running in for safety, they are running outside of the circle alongside C Triple G. Could this be a bait or do they just have C Triple G in a sticky situation? Cluster finds nobody. Those ice grenades do not detect anyone as well. And Indostars, they exit this particular battle. They do not want to deal with the circle and potential annihilation c triple g will continue to survive although for indo stars they're just about to run into wag so they might have to battle it out for that compound pushing over to the perspective of Ooh. attack all round here they do run into evos jump god just going to be running around trying to find the eliminations they do get folky Oh my goodness, Aim God gonna go down on the side of Eva, so Jump God getting that elimination. Abax going down as well, thanks to Alan. And so far, so good for attack all around, eliminating Evos from the competition and securing themselves some extra elimination points for the round. Ooh, WAG saving attack all around there in that particular shot, but now see Triple G. They've closed the distance already with the opportunity to shut down attack all around, but they choose to stay silent instead. And they know the danger. 15 more seconds. They have to start traveling. They send out the UAV towards attack all around. But the question is, how will they circle around towards this next zone, which is pretty far away from them? Ooh, God of War, on the other hand, with a skirmish against another Vietnamese squad of WAJ. Oh, this is going to be a bit of a crazy one. We do have our 
next circle as well. These teams really want to battle for this compound. It's so advantageous. Alan, though, going to be hiding himself in between these pillars of blue walls. But the Melters are just not helping him in this position at all. Last member for WAG, but just too much coming through. And he will be eliminated, unfortunately, for attack all around. C Triple G, though, chasing that circle. Trying to see where Ooh. they can go. Indo stars, though, really wanting to steal this compound away from God of Wolf. Now, here's the thing. God of Wolf are split between these two compounds. If one compound gets invaded, that might just be it here for God of Wolf. But the question is, how does Indo stars safely get into oh. one of these? Dequan, though, actually jumping into the backlines, coming in with his teammate as well, going for the backliner. Beautiful execution. Insane play for this team. They do drop down in the process, but the team is coming through to recoup behind this tree. What a play, AJ. Oh, fantastic backstab using the portal go. But now they also have to focus on picking up the ad. Leave, who wanted to go out and managed to get that backstab, got tagged up instead. They see exactly what's happening. But now Death trying to wake away, walk away from death itself. And the charge buster in his hands, absolutely useless as he has to patch himself up. One more from outside. Just bubbling in those shots. Isa with the M1887 trying to get the connection, but all of those blue walls stops him. And AD Dia with the fight and flies on out, getting that shot in. Wasana sticking his nose into this battle as well. Buriram, the biggest winners of the engagements against Indostars on the flip side of the map. And now they go for C Triple G. Now down to our final four teams here. Get High going to be taken down in a moment here for Buriram unless they can get the pick up. Wasana though, going to be the next one Beauty. to throw down. C Triple G on fire. Hungry for these eliminations. 15 points to their names and looking to try and close this gap between them and Buriram. Still fighting around that compound. Buriram trying to recoup here, but look at this C Triple G. So aggressively pushing into Buriram. And this might just be at the team. Oh my gosh. Beautiful execution. The play from C Triple G, 17 eliminations, AJ. This team is just on fire this round. Oh yeah, I mean, they need to be on fire. They're 93 points behind Buriram. So they need to not just slice down Buriram, oh, but they need more? to get massive number of points to climb that leaderboard. They want that number one spot. They do not want to settle for anything less. They <laughs> will end Buriram on the opposite side of the map. Portal goal used by Buriram to get in towards the center of the circle. Blue wall melt is going to be laid out as well. Oh, my God. What sort of a position up on top? They're teasing the circle here, Buriram, but they're still caught out. Moshi down on the ground already. Funa is going to get caught out either way by C Triple G. And that just means Buriram does not get the booyah. C Triple G positions themselves really well to walk away with a big one. Crazy plays across the board. So now down to our final three teams here, AJ. Dewa, Flash, and C Triple G. So far though, Dewa still sitting on three players looking pretty healthy so far, but they do have to watch from both fronts. They have to worry about the one player from Flash and also C Triple G coming in from their six. Shin gonna be going down. That's gonna be it for Flash. Down to our final two, AJ. Is it gonna be C Triple G or Dewa? Yeah, the numbers just not on the side of Dewa. They trade the grenades first. Oh, my mama. Two players down on the ground already. And Oat now going in for the slay. Cosq helping him out. C Triple G with a massive booyah in Alpine. Calculated. Cool. You know, some teams, when they get a win, they would be cheering. They'd be jumping up in the air. Just stoic high fives. It was, it was all as if it was all according to plan, AJ. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, this is one of the best teams out there on this map. The second best team, only after Buriram United Esports, who are mainly dominant because of their massive elimination. C Triple G, two booyahs prior to this game, and now they've just picked up their third Alpine booyah to equalize with what Buriram has for themselves as well. Well played, well deserved. Great positioning, great engagement choice as well by C Triple G. You see, as a matter of fact, it wasn't even them who were knocking down on the doors of Buriram. Buriram came looking for trouble. C Triple G just responded. Actually, I think you, we probably have to give props to Dewa, right? Because Dewa also ported on top of Buriram, forcing the very awkward rooftop, um, sorry, the very awkward high ground portal go. So I wonder if things would have been a little bit different if Dewa didn't stick their nose into their business. But, you know, stuff happens in the game of Free Fire. You want to grab those points. You see all kinds of crazy stuff. But at the end of the day, like C Triple G are just really happy with this round ended for them. They got so many points from getting the Booyah as well as yeah. all of those eliminations. I, the potential of that gap closing, very much possible. But again, it's just 
very difficult unless Boriram bomb out for the majority of the games today. There are so many points you have to offset just to close that gap. Yeah, you're talking about C Triple G who averaged around 17 points on Alpine. So this was a fantastic game for them, doing even yes. better than their usual average. You're talking about an average eliminations of nine for the squad. <laughs> Clearly, they beat that score for themselves. So as long as you're outdoing your own average scores for the map, there's nothing much that you want to complain about as well. And mm -hmm. obviously, everybody's going to be pleased with the Booyah on their side. C Triple G is just one of those teams that is showing us clearly they are championship worthy, right? But can they catch up with Buriram, who has already done so much to put the distance between themselves and the other squads is yet to be seen. Whether it can be done today or not, I think it's just slightly possible unless Buriram stops making it into the final circle. Buriram needs to be taken out within the first three teams in itself before they can even get through to the third circle. If Buriram gets taken out, up, in the next three games, C Triple G is going to end up in the number one spot. Could be, but I think maybe realistically, <laughs> next, next week of play, <laughs> official week of play, not next week. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. there's going to be no games this week. But we do have an interview session coming up, so let's see what our winners have to say after grabbing an amazing booyah for game number three. Yay! So impressive! And this is the first booyah for Thai team today, and this is Peter from DTTT. Welcome! So, this is the first Booyah for Thai team today. How do you feel? นอกจากอันเนี้ยเป็นบูย่าครั้งแรกของทีมไทยรู้สึกยังไงบ้างครับก็รู้สึกโอเคครับใช่บูย่าในวันนี้ก็เป็นแล้วอัพใหม่นะ
no doubt at all, right? Koskyu's one of their firepower players as well, alongside Peter, getting the five eliminations and the second spot. One more making it in all three members for the elimination leaders from C Triple G. They have to be proud of themselves. This is a massive round for the Thai team to catch up with their counterpart from the exact same nation, Buriram United Esports. Crime MKS picking up the key player spotlight here for the rescues on his teammates. I mean, obviously, we saw Expand being tortured quite a bit out there, but mm. those revivals brought nothing for them. They still got eliminated early. JW's Isa had four revivals for his team members, but JW, I don't think this was a heavy round for them. They initially needed about 71 points. Now they're standing at 63, which means they couldn't even walk away with a total of 10. Eight points from them. It's not enough if they want to breach the top 12. Yeah, and of course our top three weapons for the rounds will be the Bison, Woodpecker and Trogon. So a good mix across the board because we did mm. see a mix of CQC and long range, yeah. especially when it came to that final circle where things just got really interesting with, with how much distance there was between the teams before CQC, CQC did finally kick in for um, that final circle. So game standings, we've got to take a look at some of these points here because for some of the teams, it is incredibly important. So firstly, C Triple G picking up 35 points. Beautiful. Big for the team. We do have to remember that they do need to offset the 13 that Buriram scored. So they did yep. ultimately get 22 points ahead of Buriram. So a good start to, to slowly close that gap. Hopefully they can continue to close that gap because uh, if we're around, I give an opportunity to expand it again. We've seen what happened in the past where you think you're catching up, but then Buriram just takes two steps forward and you take one step back. Yeah, and that's exactly what Buriram did this time as well. The distance between C Triple G and Buriram still is a devastating 71 points. So there's still quite a huge mountain to climb here. Three more games to go. But once again, if they want to cut the distance down, Buriram should not perform in all three of the final games of the day. If C Triple G wants to personally make sure of that, they have to take the juggernaut of a risk and hot drop Buriram which is something that teams just do not do for a good reason. Buriram will just mm. toast you. But of course, a little bit of luck has to play its part in that as well, depending on the weapons that are picked up. I'm still keeping my eye on GOW and their journey to the top 12. They are now 40 six points away sorry 63 points away from the top 12 which is a little painful to work for looking at how their performance has been ever since that purgatory booyah yeah but ultimately they're closing the gap right like that's the goal for these teams if you can continue to close that gap you just make things a little bit easier for you when you do look at next week's matches now speaking of today's match kalahari this is my favorite map. I think everybody knows this. Oh, Very yeah. different playstyle required to conquer Kalahari. And we do have a couple front runners for Kalahari mm -hmm. as well. So aside Bori Ram, as we always see this team at the moment, the other two teams labeled on the graphic here is um, STE and Reverse Red. But yep. these two teams are not playing. So AJ, who is actually considered the next best two after Bori Ram? C Triple G as well as Indostars. Indostars have already proven today Ooh. that they are hot. They are on fire. But unfortunately for them, they have not secured a single Booyah on Kalahari. So perhaps they can start now with this map and continue it with the final three weeks that we've got in hand. But of course, I did mention another team that C Triple G. They just ended the game with a massive Booyah. They've got the adrenaline pumping through their veins. Perhaps they want to go for a back-to-back. -back. And you know they're capable of doing that. I think all three teams were capable of getting that booyah. So super excited to get this game underway to see who's going to get those points. And I mean, the question is as well, is it even going to be our top three teams? You might end up just getting an underdog to win and grab those points. Very likely possibility. We have seen two underdogs get the first two booyahs of the day. But let's see these teams put the pedal to the metal, put the work in. Who is going to grab this booyah? Match number four, it's Kalahari. WAG has been pretty silent today. We are looking forward to them perhaps catching up with EWOS Divine, who are currently in the seventh spot. They're 37 points behind them, so they need back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back good performance. And the Indonesians, you can just leave them to their up-and-down performance to disrupt their own journey towards the top. So Vietnam has to just hope for the best for themselves. And when you look at the drop spots here, not a lot of early skirmishes. C Triple G dropping at Bayfront and Daywa United moving towards Council Hall. They are going to be the ones in the most trouble as they are smacked up in the middle of Expand and C Triple G. Yep. 
plenty of room here for everybody. Lots of real estate. Not too surprised mm -hmm. if we don't see anything, but we are going to be seeing Onik and Todak actually try and compete for the maze here. So let's see who's going to be able to walk out of the skirmish scot free and who gets lucky with the loot. Yeah, one for one on the trade victory. Great gun to pick up early game. The M1014, the shotgun does definitely hurt. Heba, though, with the SMG, manages to go in for the sprays, but a double oh, man set up. Victory gets yet another knockdown. Heba! Trying to go for the elimination, but just cannot find the angle through those two blue walls. Joel down on the ground already. Vector just could not help him out. Traps with the AC-80 and the P-90. Victory oh, bites the dust. And Kiba is not ambushed by the second player on the side of Soda, who just allows his friend to be taken out of the equation. Hold your horses, because we do see a couple of players from WAG showing themselves on the map. And I think once they do start hearing some of this noise, we could be in for a round two mm. here. And remember, we are looking at a couple of revives as well for Onyx. So some of these players are going to be coming back in with absolutely nothing. So WAG, can they find these players on Onyx? They do spot out Kiba, and I think Gary's been spotted as well. Now under attack. So these two players from Onyx, if they can somehow turn things around, this would be fantastic. But no, they do find Kiba. Now they're going to go after Gary, who's trying to go for Krillin, but oh. Gary gets shut down. So Onyx, they, they lose their two survivors. They do still have two players left in the matchup, but yeah. it's going to be such a hard game, especially after losing your entire lineup already. Yeah, WAG just saving Toda at the very final second there. They almost got annihilated, but that distraction allowed a good revival to come through, and the two players split up in two different directions. So Toda will survive for a little bit longer. C Triple G, on the other hand, is shutting down anybody that comes across them. And unfortunately, it's just the Indonesians from the side of Ewas Divine. Expand in the skirmish against Dewa United. We anticipated this already. And expand going in for the early shutdown. Question is, do they luck out on this engagement? Virus holds a great position up top. And a bit of very dangerous gun, the AC-80. That's not currently in meta, but it does hurt when it finds the connections through the head. Oh, Cobra has been spotted out. They actually throw out a beautiful blue wall to keep his head protected so he didn't actually get hit by a potential headshot. Actually going to be using the portal to catch up with the rest of his team. Regroup. X-Ray, though, actually being sniped out by a Virus. The team's going to have to try and come in to reinforce if possible. But look at that Virus! Gets knocked down because of the fall damage. So X-Ray should be picked up. Zeus, though, in the meantime, going to be the next one to go down thanks to Sam13. And actually does go down the team, unfortunately, because they left him behind. Gets no support. In the meantime, though, we're switching over to C-Triple-G as they do chase down some of Flash's players. And poor Volley being jumped on by two. Easy Triple knockdown. Kill. Easy elimination. C-Triple-G, I don't know how this team has done it. They're now sitting on five eliminations. And the game has just started. Absolutely. And they are obviously on a mad dash for that number one spot. 71 points is a huge bound to climb. And they know that it's not going to be easy because Buriram is the nasty squad in a good game of free fire. They were united. Oh. They have tried to shut down expand and they have done well to get those two knocks and oh. cobra is the third zuez the newest player of the squad is on a collection spree of coins but the question is can he pick up enough to revive all three members before getting taken out this might just be four games in a row that expand gets tortured out there yeah, and Zeus is also in one tap territory. So if someone just hits him with one bullet, I think he might just be out of this game. So fingers crossed for X-Band fans that they do manage to get the revives off. We are going to switch on over to a different team. C Triple G about to run into attack all round territory. The team is pretty split. Switching over to Onik here. Just camping it out so far. Maybe hoping that someone sort of walks into their line of sight for an easy pickoff, but like a pretty quiet game here for Onik. Looks at like Todak do manage to pick up Raja, so they will have one more player back in the battle. Karobo, though. Oh, one more being sniped off by Folky. Great stuff coming in from attack all round. WAG, though, applying a lot of pressure to Todak, getting rid of one of their players as well. But Traps coming in with the double revive for the team. They will be able to get their numbers back up, but they're going to have to continue to just try and re-loot. See, Triple G, though, down to Oatna and Peter, trying to find the player who eliminated one of their teammates. But Peter going to be outplayed by Traps. Now it's down to Oatna. He will uh -oh. be able to get the pick up there onto Peter, but what's the play? They're going to come in from the backside. Oatna all alone. 
outnumbered, outplayed. That's going to be it for C Triple G. 12th place in the matchup. What a shocker. Uh, that is truly a shocker. Attack all around, just messing with their chances there. Up against Toda, C Triple G definitely stood a solid chance, but with attack all around with a full squad, eight elimination strong. There was just no chance in hell for C Triple G. Although we've got the headshot leaders up here, it's just not going to mean much to one more attack all around. Easy pickings. But only one team executed and eliminated from the competition. Sorry, from this particular map this far. Expand still hanging on for their dear lives. They've somehow done it. I mean, I'm pretty surprised that they were able to do so. But we'll have to see later on how much recovery comes in. Oh, Ooh. speaking of recovery, it looks like we do get it. So Zeus and X-Ray were up and they got the final two revives. So Expand... They're now back to four man strong, but they're going to have to try and figure out how they're going to allocate their resources. And yeah, they really oh. got to think about what they had to open fast earlier because these boys are dozing off as they start this matchup. Probably a little too heavy, AJ. For sure, for sure. I mean, you know, it, it, it's just like that, right? And sometimes when, mm. you know, if you're in Malaysia, you are surrounded by good food. Too much of good food. <laughs> Oh, God, yes. <laughs> you break fast. <laughs> it, it's a fiesta. <laughs> and you oh, just want to take a good nap right after, you know. <laughs> Look, honestly, best food in Malaysia is when Raya happens. So I don't blame people if they Amen. do get a little bit ham when it comes to food. Speaking of ham, though, it looks like G'day gets picked off there by a God of Wolf. So the team is now up to three eliminations. We also see Get High getting an elimination for Buriram as well. So Buriram are very much alive and kicking in this matchup, but a very quiet one for the team. You just haven't seen a lot happen for Bury Ram. If anything, they were the ones to, to kind of get bullied early on. Yeah. And I, I know Expand personally, so these are the boys who sometimes <laughs> fast before matches, but during the fasting month of Ramadan, you, you don't have a choice. You've been fasting the whole day ever since 5 o'clock in the morning. You have to break mm. fast at 7. You have to put something in your tummy. And it's it's a it's a tad bit difficult to avoid all of that rendang and uh, you know the lemang. <laughs> the, those are heavy stuff, right? So, yeah. we, we, but of course they've managed to get those revivals in here already. Looks like perhaps someone got them a cup of coffee. They're finally waking up a tad bit. But is that going to be enough? In the meantime, we catch up with GOW, a team who's struggling to get Ooh. into the top 12. There is a homer Isa? used to tag up Moshi. Gives away his position. Wasana, Ooh. Charge Buster up top. Get, uh, joined as well by Wasana. But they're not going to be able to catch Isa just yet. And as I say that, Wasana does find the connection with the Woodpecker Kuna for the finisher. And this is the kind of team that just does not allow pickups at all. If they get the knock, you can be rest assured they're going in for the finisher. Yeah, and actually really unfavorable position here for God of Wolf as well, because this is a team that oh generally thrives when they are together. But look at where they are. They're so split up from one another. They can't provide the necessary support for each of their players. So they're just getting picked apart one by one. Speaking of getting picked apart, though, it looks like we are being, we're going to be seeing a skirmish here by Indo Stars, slowly eliminating Flash from the competition as well. Coach Heal is on the ground, just need to get picked up. I'm not sure if his teammates are there to support him. It looks like he will oh, be beauty. taken out by Yam Bin, unfortunately. So going to be a two to two split here but looks like raz possibly caught out by a number of players from flash gets out with the portal go thankfully so two for two it looks like for this matchup but actually it's just gonna be two for one i did see three players there so flash gonna be very happy that they got out of that skirmish pretty unscathed Oda in the crosshairs of WAG. Ooh, Ooh, beauty chats. by Ghost AWM straight to the head. Allen could not find those perfect connections just yet. And WAG not waiting for time at all. Goes in for the sweep, but Allen a misplaced a jump with the grappling hook. The Mag 7 could not find the connection. Raja tries to retaliate with the Krogon. Does manage to sneak one good shot in and finishes Allen off. Drops in onto the ground. Krillin, oh, they went in for the ambush, but they are the ones that are now being hunted. Krillin has nowhere to run. No coins for that pocket shop buyback as well and this looks like it's all over for wag it's all over unless he can somehow escape the fray easier though in the meantime being caught out by boriram it seems and actually both teams here three teams maybe contesting for the revival point here evos indo stars and onik three of our indonesian teams colliding this is actually insane oh yeah i mean great minds think alike and unfortunately all of the indonesians just love the command post they know the loot here is solid the defensive spots here absolutely brilliant and i love the positioning here onik just taking the left hand side of the command post 
He was divine on the right. The third team, Indostars, they say goodbye, bro. We don't have the manpower to take this fight. <laughs> so we only left with two. And that yeah, was a so good yeah. decision from the side of Indostars. Yeah, sometimes you just got to kind of just leave it. Don't, don't kick the hornet's nest. If you kick the mm. hornet's nest, you might not get what you're looking for. Rain, in the meantime, though, getting a couple of pot shots in his backside thanks to Gardu. Thankfully, though, not going down. But this does mean, and it also looks like Onik do want to apply the pressure onto Evos here. I have to say, very ballsy play. There's a lot of things to hide behind here. But so far, none of the players on Onik are going down. Very aggressive play style. Evos, though, do manage to get away with the portal go, though. So... No more skirmish. Everything is over. But on the other side of the map, the Bro Ram is just picking off flash like flies. Oh, yeah. They can't leave the yeah. compound. Folly goes down. This is not a great position to be in for flash. Mm -mm. But it's a fantastic position oh, for Bro Ram. High ground advantage. And Puna, the rusher down at the bottom to finish the job that is started by the attackers from up top. But the skirmish okay. between Indonesia is still not over just yet. Onik against Evos Divine. Evos Divine all split up. The backstab from Aim God could be the difference maker here. Gari cooking up the grenade. Tosses it towards Gadei instead. Gadei eats that one up. Not enough to take him just down. And Abax gets Gardu. Whoa! The trade back is there from Aim God. Kiba shuts down Gadei. Kiba and Joel now. Two on the side of Onik holding on for their dear lives. But they should be able to equalize the circle damaging them. Kiba, not a lot of options left now. Oh, this is a horrible position to be in. But the, the just the backstab play that came in from Oh, Evos, beauty tag. It's just... Those kinds of plays can really turn the tide of these battles and just being able to get that backside flank. Ah! Know, chef's kiss, love that play. And it looks like now, switching over to the perspective of Expand. This team has somehow managed to make a recovery and are back in play. Actually, we're seeing a couple knocks down here thanks to the play zone. WAG actually being one of them. And actually, hang on a minute, Bray Ram, 11 eliminations. What the heck has this team been doing? Yeah, picking up those points, Expand now. The recovery has been great thus far. Day Y United on the left-hand side of their compound. Outside the circle, though. Eight more seconds to engage and disengage. Do they want to take the fight? If they take the fight out in the open, Thoda stands a good chance. Oh, but the portal go to ambush the spot of Expand instead. Now Expand, sorry, Thoda instead. Expand now has the next circle. Buriram showing up on the map as well. This one just got a little bit trickier for Team Expand. Oh, expand. If they somehow get out of this, it would be an absolute miracle play. Dewa camping the outside of this zone. Oh, Moshi. I, I don't know how this team is going to be able to get out of this, but Moshi going to be causing a lot of issues as well because now Boriram know what angle to come into this fight. Dewa still throwing so many resources at this compound occupied by Expand. The thing is, if Todak are able to contribute, maybe they can actually help Expand and get some free eliminations here onto Dewa. I have to say this aggressive play from Dewa. Very surprising that this team hasn't been dropped as of yet, but speaking of drop, Virus does go down. So does Mr. 17, so being out in the open did not pay off. And now Sam 13 and Mr. 05 at risk. Mr. 05 on the ground, now down to Sam 13. His circle is just going to get smaller and smaller, trying to go for that pickup. But now he just realizes it's do or die, it's fight or die. And unfortunately for this team, they will be eliminated for the round. Seventh place for Dewa, switching on over to Expand, who are in a pretty interesting position. Can actually punish Todak for going into that compound. Oh, beauty. Down. Victory! Oh, X-Ray, what a shot. Oh, and x Roy takes the portal, goes straight up to the faces of Thoda. They want to go back in here for the re-engage. But the guy has been picked up already. Zuer's charge buster puts out a good blue wall. And he blocks off the opportunities for the side of Thoda. And they want to take their portal, goes right back into the circle. That was just a teaser for Thoda. The question is, will Thoda go in for the pursuit? They send out the UAV. UAV scans out the team of Expand. But nobody else in or around their compound. In the meantime, Buriram attacking. Attack all around. Jump caught down. Karoro, the final player. Nowhere to run. Run, pulls up a good blue wall. Circle Ooh. tags him up. Booty rubs get high. Finds him. Karoros out and attack all around. Unfortunately, will falter. Now down to our top five teams here, AJ. The circle is tiny. 13 players remaining, and it's within a compound as well. So these teams are going to have to try and figure out a way to safely get in without oui, getting oui. sniped. Bruno, though, actually being shot at their <laughs> ankles, does get onto the rooftop somehow. Thankfully for free, so it's going to be relatively safe up there. As long as no one gets on that rooftop, we do see a portal go up there. Expand, trying to apply some pressure there onto Funa and Cyrus. They do finally go onto that rooftop themselves, so with yeah. the grappling hook. But look at this, though. 
players working with elevation, oh players working under that compound. This late game is going to be crazy. Yep, and there is a portal go here. X-Roy, good reposition. No fall damage here. All thanks to oh. the grappling hook, but M1014, oh, not see. enough to save his life. He steps into Thodat territory. Thodat takes an easy elimination here. Zuez walks on in with the charge, but some finds the first clip with the connection, but Crime Train and right back out. Noki two for two so far. Zuez does manage to get that revenge. Crime needs to be picked up. Noki is there to guard those players. Zuez trying his very best to take those players out, but to no oh, well, yes. he gets attacked, he gets put down onto the ground, Thora out of the equation, and Buriram on the other hand, from the flip side of things, doing a number on Indo Stars. Indo Stars not going to be too happy with where they are playing Buriram right now, just busy trying to occupy this compound, Indo Stars. I don't know how this team is going to get out of this. Now, speaking of other team, we do have WAG just hiding in the corner, doesn't want to reveal their position at all. The, the major players right now is Warrior Ram and Expand. The remaining two teams only have one player apiece. They want to try and play the survival game. Who is Warrior Ram going after next? Runa actually oh. being caught out by Raz on Indo Stars. That might be pretty big because his teammates are not there. Goes down. Now down to three players. Warrior Ram, they're going to try and go for the spot. They actually caught Cyrus. So WAG is going to be ending the round in fourth place. Three teams still remaining. Mostly Expand and Warrior Ram. But Indo, uh, for Indo Stars, though, maybe they can pull off a cheeky play. I believe this is the first game that Expand is performing better than Toda. But will they go all the way with the Booyah in itself? Buriram brought back very late revivals towards the end and the players are still stacked. They've managed to pick up their loot already and now it is Expand up down. against their skirmish partners. The one and only Buriram Esports. Skylar will take down their defenses but they storm was Sada instead to Whoa. equalize the playing ground. CV3 and now Crime MK is stacked up already. Those glue walls are going to buy them a tad bit more time. They circle on around Cobra with the charge buster but nowhere to run, nowhere to Crime. hunt. Crime down. Zoo has stacked up. Cobra's the final Cobra. hope He's out as well, and Burira walk away with a solid booyah with the final second double revival. Oh my gosh, what an incredible play coming in from Bray Ram United. The execution for the late game was brilliant as well. I had at one point I kind of worried how are they going to get down from that low ground once that circle starts moving, but they preemptively moved before the circle did mm. so that there wasn't an opportunity for Expand to capitalize on their movements and just ultimately again standard warrior ramp perfect execution understanding their targets and yeah i, I guess they kind of lost funa early on but it doesn't really matter you still have three more players on your team that are equally skilled i mean buriram this is that comeback gameplay comeback booyah for them and they only have one problem the problem is c triple g catching up with a total booyah tally with the previous match equalizing them with the eight booyahs overall from the knockout stages buriram can't have that buriram wants to be number one on every single segment be it booyahs placements eliminations all the total points they want the very best and now they put a solid 97 points between themselves as well as c triple g with this solid game for themselves c triple g unfortunately faltered a little bit too early for our liking we did not expect them to go out with a little bit of a downside this time around, only picking up seven points. Mm. I mean, there's only so many points that can go around, AJ. I mean, you got to do what you got to do with what you can. So, I mean, we I saw... guess at this point, just just shrug it off and get ready for the next game. I you you were shocked we when do. we saw C Triple G five eliminations. I mean, that, that, it was like mm -hmm. one of the hardest starts that C Triple G had, and then attack all around had to show up and just. Oof, make their hopes of getting the back-to-back -back booyah disappear. Yeah, I mean, C Triple G thought that they could party, but then a tackle round called the police. I don't know. <laughs> Just <laughs> something happened. Um, I, I mean, sometimes you, you have that momentum, especially going into the game afterwards. You think, like, emotionally, the momentum should be yours and you mm. should play better. I think you also have to realize, like, sometimes there is a limit to that. And so you're not immortal when you get a really great game the previous round. Sometimes yeah. it does make you play a little bit silly. A little bit too crazy than he normally would. Yeah. So I think for C Triple G, they're gonna have to train things down a bit. Maybe the maybe the match is gonna humble them a little bit and they go back to you know playing like standard C Triple G, aggressive but coordinated aggressive. You, we really have to admire the way Buriram took that booyah, right? And 
very few moments we get to see the Skylar in perfect usage and that was one of those moments. Skylar is a late game meta at this point of time, especially after how the previous World Series ended. The World Series went, the championship went to Brazil because of Skylar and that Skylar was exactly what broke down the defenses, the full solid defense of Expand. In such a tight circle, most of the time, the players are going to be camped behind just a few glue walls there. Skylar with his radius of effect around all of those glue walls not only does he take down every single glue wall he prevents you from erecting any of those glue walls within that radius for the next couple of seconds forcing expand to reposition making them sitting ducks out there but of course we want to hear from the Thai players themselves as to what they think about their solid booyah this time around let's hear it it's been a long time, but they are already coming. That this is Moshi from Burrito United Esports. You like why, no? <laughs> okay, first question. What happened to your teams in the first T game? It's not look well. Go, get high up, get high. Hop, party, like, no, 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 Okay, uh, we fell at the, the third the third three game, the first three first game. game. Yeah, the first three game. And we're trying to fix the mistake and then everything went perfect on the game four. So that's why we got Buya. Oh, okay. And can you uh, tell us about the last thing that you jumped into the vending machine? What did you do? Advice to the people who are going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. He said in his heart, here, have his friend inside. You have to open and see. So my friend have to join and uh, involved with the game. That's why I have to invite them. Are you sure that it's not because you are lazy to fight? Yes, we are to fight or not? We have to bring our friends to help us. Yes, we have to bring our friends to help us. This is the reason, this is the reason. Of course, that's why I cannot fight alone. That's why I need my friend. Because uh, our game is play as a team, right? So we have to play like, as a team. Okay, and last thing. Do you want to say anything to your fans? Do you want to say anything to your fans? ฝากถึง2เกมหลังนี้นะครับเพราะผมเอาปุยยาทั้งหมดแน่นอนครับจานเคสฝากมา confidence okay for my fan please keep support us we will achieve two more ปุยยา from the last two game ah because it is said by get high get high said okay not not from you ไม่ใช่มาจากเราใช่ไหมใช่มาจากผมด้วยแล้วก็ okay it is all from you and from get high yes 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Both both you and get high. Yes. Yes. So much confidence. Yes. Okay. And now back to you, Chow Kaiser. I'm pretty sure Moshi not afraid to get into a tussle. It's just that there is a very specific position that Moshi is trying to hold on to, and that is as the sniper, as the flanker, as the guy who does not get involved in the up-close and personal battles because he is the support player slash sniper of the squad and he has been playing his role super well. If Funa is able to walk away with such solid eliminations, it is always because Moshi is trying to take those bird's eye view, spot out players from afar, give him that information in all of those tags and Funa is just the sweeper of the fields. His Strogon clearly helps him do exactly that. Exactly. I actually really love it when we switch over to Funa's point of view when we do get into those CQCs because mm. this man, his movements when he's trying to chase somebody, oh, yeah. it's it's something to behold. Yeah. It is he makes himself so difficult to hit, but also he puts himself in such a prime position for a potential headshot, a body shot. His accuracy is almost unmatched when you compare him to other players that play a very similar role to him. So Funa Great player. If anything, I, I just love watching Fruna and Wasana. Like, no no hate to get high and Moshi, but like Fruna and Wasana, their point of, point of views are just so fun to watch. And once again, the only player that is pretty much dominating out there with the Skylar is Moshi. And you see that he has been participating in these battles. Our dearest host, 3,648 on the damage. This man was picking up a lot. It's just that you don't see him getting those eliminations because his role is just not to be the eliminator of the squad. That role belongs to Funa. And, for, and this is why I respect Buriram so much. 
they really don't uh, you know they, they don't fight for who gets the MVP within the squad everybody plays their role so that as a team Buriram can dominate out there on the battlefield and he has been slowly sharpening his skills with those Skylar usage and we don't really see a lot of the impact from Moshi as far as the active skill goes because once again it's a very late game sort of an active skill to be used perfectly not saying that it cannot be used within the early parts of the game but in early parts of the game it's very easy for teams to split up across the battlefield and the Skyler probably puts one player at a disadvantage the main reason why expand got exposed was because of that Skyler shot so brilliant plays as usual from Buriram and key players wise we have to take the highlight once again to traps revived his team members five times out there this guy had to look for so much of money he got tired and of course noki <laughs> three out of those five revives went for noki i don't i don't even know why we are highlighting the guy who got revived three times <laughs> uh, teamwork you know i i mean you to to get revived you kind of need your team to work with you so it's <laughs> probably something um although the game was pretty difficult for todak as well right i, yeah. I mean i think todak is one of the few teams we see utilizing revives so much but at the same time i kind of wonder is this is this part of their play style or is it because they're consistently targeted by a lot of other bigger teams that they're forced to revive mm. so many times right yeah um absolutely. so i'm just waiting for that one game where we just see todak pop off because i think at this point in time we've seen them sort of like be in the middle of the pack towards the bottom 16 points here this is great but when you're considering the leaderboard for todak they have so much work to do to even consider closing that gap yeah, even though expand performs better than Toda for the first time today it's just by one point so expand mm. really needs to wake up they have always put a great distance between themselves as well as the rest of their malaysian counterparts this is the part where they really have to step it up speaking of stepping up buriram was pretty disappointed they didn't walk away with the booyah previously and this time they came back with a massive 21 eliminations alongside the booyah for 33 points and c triple g was unlucky that attack all around showed up at the worst possible timing as they were doing battle with Toda. C Triple G thought oh. they could eliminate Toda, but instead they got eliminated. Toda hung on for pretty long after that. And now the distance between Buriram and C Triple G has once again exploded. 97 points for C Triple G to catch up. But this is this is such a sad round for people that are cheering on for C Triple G to catch up and inevitably take over Buriram because yeah. The, the previous round was Z Triple G's round. They scored 36 or 34 points, 30, somewhere around there, like 34, 36 points. Yeah. And then it's been nullified by a single round just because Z Triple G got eliminated early on. Like some of these games, as volatile as they are, it's still such a delicate balance, a delicate dance between yeah. these teams. So like even the small mistakes, they're going to end up being bigger than you would actually like them to be but we are going to go for a quick break as we get the players ready for our final two games so we'll see you guys in five minutes because we still have two more games of uh, supplier how'd you like them apples
you like them apples? We have been focusing on the Thai teams. We've been focusing on the bottom of the leaderboard. We've been focusing on the teams trying to breach the top 12. But there has been one team that has been sneaking away the points in an unsuspecting manner. Indo Stars are dominating the overall leaderboard for performance today. 75 points, two points ahead of the fantastic Buri Ram United Esports themselves. The biggest question is going to be whether or not Indo Stars can now overtake attack all around, who are just three points ahead of them. Let's Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, survivors of all ages, welcome back. Two more games to go. And Danny, I think for some of these teams, the day is just getting started. They're just starting to wake up now. And they're waking up on a Sunday night. Maybe a little bit inconvenient for some <laughs> of these teams, but uh, you know, you do you, boo. But yes, that race for the top, and in particular, Indo Stars, I think a lot of people. Some people might be shocked. I think other people are going to kind of expect it. But I have oh, to yeah. say, just amazing performance for this team. I mean, I think I said this earlier today. There doesn't seem to be much of a ceiling for Indo Stars. They just keep getting better and better. And we're still waiting to see, like, what is the cap? Now, the thing yeah. is, I think some people are asking, are they as good as Boriram? I'm not sure if they've reached that point yet, because I think Boriram is the pinnacle of competitive Free Fire. They yeah. are considered the best of the best for a reason. But I think Indo Stars, with how they're playing and how quickly they're adapting to the meta, mm. to the teams, that they are reaching that point. Like, I think if there yeah. was a team that I would say they're probably comparable to, I think they're starting to reach that point where they're competing with teams like Reverse Red. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we just saw the fact that they opened up the day with a solid booyah for themselves. 26 points they scored. And then three very, very decent games. 17 points at Purgatory, 17 at Alpine, 15 at Kalahari. A little bit of a drop in momentum and performance for sure. But in the overall grand scheme of things of picking up points within the day, they are doing a fantastic job. And now, of course, we move on into Next Terra right after this. And Indostars are going to be forced to continue performing their very best. They're not going to be given a choice at all. The only problem here is Indostars are a mid-tier team when it comes to the performance on Nextera. They they just have to find a way, though, to stay alive. Two games. Two games to stay alive. Two games to end this weekend. Two games until the next matches, which are two weeks from now. Yeah. I think if there's if there are games that you need to perform on, it has to be these last two. And of course, you have the random map. You, we don't know what that last map is going to be. So for some teams, they're going to have an advantage and others are probably going to be thinking, oh gosh, why does it have to be this map? I'm looking forward to seeing what that random map is going to be. But let's take a look at Next Terra mm. and start looking at some of the teams that are going to be performing on Next Terra as well. So off the top of our heads, or at least yep. we have on the graphic here, who are the teams for Next Terra? C Triple G, Ram, STE. But in in the place of STE, who from A and C is considered third place for this map? Uh, Indonesia's going to be pretty pleased. It's Onyx Olympus. 
But wow. Indo Stars will be looking to take the spotlight away from Onyx Olympus. Although they are a well-performing team, Onyx Olympus has not managed to secure a single Booyah on Nextera. Indo Stars, on the other hand, has managed to prove that they are capable of doing so. The only problem is, for some peculiar reason, Indo Stars struggles finding those eliminations on this map. Hmm. Maybe today's the day. Time to get those eliminations. I mean, they, they've been doing pretty well today. So yes. I think for them to suddenly, you know, take out their guns and start going ham, I think today's got to be the day. If they can't get those eliminations today, then maybe this is just their weakness. Maybe this is their kryptonite. Maybe it's just, this is the map where they just focus on surviving. Not so much eliminations, just try to not form out. Yeah, apart from Purgatory, Next Era is their second worst map. So I, I don't really have high hopes for Indostar's performing, but I'm going to hope and bet on the fact instead that because they have been able to sneak away some solid points, that gives them the confidence, that gives them a little bit of a boost in, I, I guess, goals to be or to continuously be that number one team of the day before we go on a two-week break. Their flight path is going to be skewed a little bit towards the right of the map, which just means that a little bit of this next era is going to be inaccessible or at the very least a little bit of a torture to get to places like mortar ruins as well as twin bridge will need a little bit of walking in order to reach yeah maybe some of the teams sort of change their drop points if they're not able to reach them now just looking at where the teams are flying right now we're not seeing too much conflict attack all round is sort of split around wag but it looks like a pretty oh see triple g are they thinking about it we did see them sort of fly in that direction. Nah, they, 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 everybody's being a good, good little team on Next Terra. <laughs> We've only well, got five matches to play, so you, you, you better avoid all of the engagements first. So Todak, pretty clear. It seems very spread out as well. So just a lot of wolf though. Oh, okay. So Death playing with fire. It seems actually going to be scouting out in We need to do a little bit of damage. Bye bye. It's death. I mean, the name implies something, I suppose. <laughs> Early game, no med kits. Kochil had a very powerful weapon, the Bison. So it, that's the problem in entirety. But in the first three circles, the pocket market is going to be very useful. So instantaneous revive, and we are back to 48 players on the map. But there is a skirmish here that is going to break out between WAG as well as attack all around at farm. Attack all around were the third party against C-Triple-G earlier. Ooh. Perhaps there can be a little bit of revenge here if Luck just has it on the outside. Allen finds Kororo once again, the Bison. You pick it up early game, you're probably going to be walking away with some solid eliminations. Yeah, probably not the best time to fight as well for attack all around, so... Maybe it was a good elimination. Just spot out the enemy, decide if it's a good or bad fight. And yeah, they lost Kororo, but Kun got there, picks them back up, gets the revive off, and the team's just going to continue on their merry way and hopefully get that complete reset. We do have perspective here for Echo Fox. And we did see one of the G players over there, Oatner, being spotted on our play mm, oh. view here, but they think about it. No, they're just stacking up the coins. Uh, and X Roy just used 1,400 of those free quiet coins to buy something. So everybody else just mm. dropped the coins for X Roy. Man potentially purchased a Horizon line, which oh. means X Roy could be playing the backup play this time around. Well, we'll have to figure it out later on. Oda, on the other hand, skirmish against Day by United. And Virus, oh, Virus goes for the sprays. No drop, Sam 13 with a double revolver does manage to drop traps. No elimination just yet. Needs to get the follow up. In the meantime, expand versus C Triple G. That's a big fight off screen. Oh my gosh, two players down on the side of Dewa. They can try to go for the pickup. They will get some eliminations in the process, though. Expand, though, running into some problems of their own because they run into C, Triple G territory, or vice versa, actually. It looks like Crime, uh, Crime MKS being taken down by Peter. And uh, he will get immediately revived as he does get taken down. Cobra just going to try and duke things out in this building, thinking about whether or not he, maybe he can get for a 2 for one Oh, I can't get it, Peter. Finishes him off way too fast, and you know, Zeus, this man, his job is to revive. Fikri in the meantime also re reviving one of his own teammates. God of Wolf jumping into a fight themselves, actually trying to third party the skirmish between C Triple G and Expand. 
So far, no dice, no eliminations, no steals. Indo stars, though, going for a fight of their own. Can they get what they're looking for? I don't think so. But Raz, in the meantime, actually going to be knocked down due to fall damage. I have to say, though, Indo stars have seen this team chase Flash quite a lot these past couple games. Expand is playing pretty far away from home at this land stage here in Malaysia. Oh. So perhaps they just want to end the day. They are ready for Hari Raya. They just want to go home. <laughs> They just want to drive all the way back to JB tonight. I'm in. Sure. If that's what they want to do. <laughs> get, there, get there early. Avoid all the traffic. We all know how traffic is for the holiday times. So, oh, boy. Best time to stay home. Um, speaking of staying home, I think if you're a tackle around, oh. you wish you stayed home here. W-A-G oh, on the my. high ground, though. Oh, they do get the drop. In the meantime, though, X-Ray being picked up on the other side of the map. So Ghost and Spire is down on the side of W-A-G. And, oh, they get another one. I think that might just be it for the team, unfortunately. Attack all around, chasing after Krillin, the man normally reviving the team. But if Krillin gets chased and caught, that's mm. going to be it. Curtains for the team. They're nice. just going to have to wait for the final game on that random map. Quick recap for the, some of these other teams. They're attack all around, leading the charge with five eliminations, followed by CGGG with four eliminations to their name. Dewa, IDS, and WAG sitting on two eliminations apiece. And then finally, Expand and God of Wolf sitting on one elimination. A couple more eliminations happening on the screen there. Death and Fikri both going down to CGGG and Dewa. Pause Q. Can Deadshot cost you, I tell you. That's mm. a easy double. Oh, ghost. Goals taken out as oh, well. C Triple it. G on by uh, WAG. Unfortunately, they did manage to get that one revival, but could not hang on for much longer after that. Flash follows suit in 11th spot. So two out of 12 eliminated already. And now a potential skirmish for a team expand into stars. Which he just fought extra boy tagged up early. Cobra, Cobra? as well. Oh. But he does manage to drop Raz. The rescue potentially there. Cobra eliminated by his kill already. 18 deer coming for the pickup on his buddy. No grenade to take him out just yet. Cochil backing them up. Drogon for the tag. And Crime MKS oh, backs crime. away. Has got an opportunity, but the SMG just not powerful now. Not powerful enough. And he was just overwhelmed by so many players as well. Not the best fight there for x -Man. unfortunately. Evos in the meantime, though, battling their own battle, running into Buriram. Now, this is a fight nobody wants to deal with, but once it happens, you got to deal with it. Great play, catching at Funa oh immediately, but Ray also going to be dropped, unfortunately, and will not get picked up by his team. Very unfortunate position. Would have been great if they were able to get that pick up. In the meantime, though, Onik running into God of Wolf, and it looks like God of Wolf they are looking a little injured as one of their players is currently still off that map. So if the Indonesians do decide to pursue, I don't think God of Wolf is in a great position to play defense at all. Ideally, they try to dodge this fight. Great information play by Onik here. First using that R1 to scan out those players and then sending out the UAV to look at how the movements are going to be like. And they detect God of Wolf running out of the compound, which means they can go in for an easy pursuit to just take control of the area. Expand, on the other hand, looking for a vending machine, spots out a player right in front of him and decides not to engage with Toda. I believe the team has not been fully revived just yet. There could be a lack of coins here. Pocket Shop could be used, but the player is just not hopping on into action just yet. We'll have to wait. Mm. I'm still wondering what in the world was bought by x with 1,400 coins earlier. They could have just saved that up for a rainy day. Yeah, that was, that was the thing I was wondering as well. Speaking of, though, we are running into a bit of a skirmish here. Oh my gosh, attack all round going up against um, Dewa here. And Volky constantly juking around, trying to not let those shots connect there on the side of Dewa. <laughs> Dewa playing on the offense. In the meantime, though, they do manage to get a port out for one of their players. Two players out, three players out. Oh, but Jump got a little bit too late to the party. The rest of his team was able to get across the river. But this is still not a great place for the team because the circle is moving in. So they will start taking some chip damage here thanks to that blue zone. But Dewa, they're going to continue on with the pursuit knowing that they have the numbers advantage. They are launching players across the river and attack all around still trying to escape. But AJ, I think this might just be it unless they can somehow turn the tides in their favor with some eliminations. Mr. 05 down on the side of Dewa. Mr. 17 very low as well. Maybe this is what they need, but they are still losing players. They're bulky down. Praying God's still sticking around. 
Oh man, he's trying to get in a position, but he's just taking too much damage. And that might just be it for the team. They were great point of view. They have all their eyes set for these eliminations. And then just, there's really not much you're going to be able to do for attack or round. Todak, in the meantime, they're not going to be too happy as C Triple G have locked into Boy. combat with the team as well. Oh, no, though. Going to be dropping in the skirmish as well. One more. Going to try and reinforce his teammates trapped, causing a lot of issues for the team. Noki wants to be picked up, but I don't think he's going to be able to be picked up easily. And actually, see Triple G. Gonna re just gonna back up. They want to retreat. They need to reset. Yeah, thought I just turned on C Triple G. This is a great turn of events for the Malaysian Ooh. squad, but for C Triple G, who are trying to chase, oh. trying to pursue Buriram oh. Esports, not the great. Crosskey with a double revival here. Drogon in hand. Guy's done his job already, but he wants to continue to do more for the team, and he does exactly Whoa. that for the A124. The pop right at the right time. A 2v1. Koskyu goes down. Couldn't do much oh, in a situation no. like that. One more, couldn't get the shot as well, just surviving on one health, but very likely he will go down as well. God of Wolf gonna be eliminated in 10th place, unfortunately. Gonna be losing that battle there. In the meantime, though, Indostar's gonna be fighting another fight themselves, running into Expander. It looks like Expander on the retreat, trying to group up together as a team, but they're dropping left, right, and center like flies in the compound. But hang on a minute, though, we've got <laughs> another person here. Attack all rounds gonna stick their nose into Indostar's business, but is this going to be a mistake? Come on, Indostars! Dominate the leaderboard, baby! They are doing fine already, and now attack all around, putting themselves in a very sticky situation. Buriram hitting them from Buriram. the back as well, and Buriram helping out Indostars. Smash the players on the side of attack all around. Wasana going in for the hunt. Pokey running away from perhaps out of the pen, into the fire, into a monster truck instead. Oh. Funa whips out his sniper. Boom! Bye-bye, oh. Pokey, Funa! <laughs> Says yeah. and the elimination point to Buriram. Nine points on their side, and now they turn the crosshairs over to Inder Stars. And they have all the time to play because they are already Buna. in the next circle. But they were united, sticking their noses into this battle as well. Oh my gosh, the insanity of this battle. And actually, C Triple G is within the vicinity as well. They do have one of their players left, but Buriram, they're going to have to deal with these Indonesians before they can do anything else. Because <gasps> if they don't, they are going to be overwhelmed. There are four teams here, AJ. What is this? Woo. Great use of the portal go. Moshi disappeared. They missed the 05. Went in for the pursuit. Finds absolutely no one. Jeez. Does he want to go <laughs> through that portal go and find out the hard way? Karoro brings Foki back. Attack all around. Still hanging on. C Triple G is oh my out. Gosh. What a crazy turn of events. These odds are stacked against Buriram here. Day Y United dropping right by behind them. And they need one more assistance, so one more team to interfere in this battle. The Indonesians are going to be wiped out if that does not happen. Buriram already taking note of their position. And they swoop on in to not wait around for Dewa United. They want to engage out in the open fast. Oh man, I hope Todak is ready for this because they're about to run into Indostars in that compound. And if they don't win this fight, they're going to be eliminated. We know how Indostars play. They fight from start to finish. They don't retreat at all. The blue walls buying some time, still sitting on the other Ooh. side. But we have to see the floodgates open. First person to go down is Zen, followed up by Noki. Fikri down wow. for the next one to go down. And it's down to traps. But hang on a minute. Uh -oh. Here comes Onyx uh -oh. from the low ground sticking their nose into this business. I, Indo Stars, we have to try and go for a recovery because their players are slowly going down. Looks like Leem actually got caught by a grenade there. Uh -oh. Gare in the meantime, though, from Onyx, going to be caught as well. But look at this. So Joel tried to go for the sniper, also got caught out. There are just too many players in such a small area. Onyx went in there to ruin the party for Indo Stars, but Buriram helped out Indo Stars by shutting down the Onyx players. Onyx returning fire, and Indo Stars just thanking their freaking lucky star. And they split oh up. They have gone into the middle part of the map. Bending machine buyback for 18 deer late in the game. They are pulling a booty ramp off at this point of time. Look at this two Indonesian squad already moving in towards the center of the circle. Booty ramp just hanging on by the sidelines. They Wasana. can't go in for an open engagement. Onik on the outside. Wasana between the Indonesians. And this is just an unfortunate situation as Liam gets brought back. He is shot out of the air. Gardu trying to find Wasana. 18 deer inside the house Buriram in a lot of trouble yeah we still have Indostar staying inside the house it's actually just a battle outside of the compound at the moment so Indostars are just waiting for their opportunity to fight Garudu is still on the low ground Buriram is sitting on the high ground of that same building three teams occupying one oh. area absolutely crazy and this is also the edge of the, edge oh, of the circle like as well oh beautiful can they get to it though that's this the question 
Danny, this is just big brain plays from Indostas. They've already set up this portal go here directly to the vending machine. If at all they do get ambushed by Buriram and things do turn sour, they can quickly reposition and that's still gonna be inside the circle. They're just using that as the final option though. They do not want to live a good defensive spot, but this next circle is gonna determine the fate of Indostas. Where does the circle drag them? Is it towards that vending machine? Does the circle go to Indostas? One more second. And the circle will force everybody in Indosas needs to move. And on the opposite side, it's going to be Ewas Divine. Either way, Indonesia stands a strong chance to walk away with the Booyah. Oh my gosh, Evos are in such a prime position because everyone has to get rid of everyone else on the other side of the map. Moshi on the high ground, Indo Stars. They're being invaded by Onik as Onik are finally trying to make their way into that compound. The circle, though, slowly shrinking, running out of space. Now, Garudu running into a battle there with Wasana. Wasana forced out into the blue zone, taking quite a bit of damage as Moshi sits on the edge of that circle, healing up. Gonna have to finally go to that low ground. Indostar's hiding in that corner. Uh -oh. They've got to start moving. If they don't move, they're going to take too much damage from that blue zone. They're sticking around, though. Here comes Evo. Oh, Such portal a great go. spot. Oh, they freedom from the portal go. They've also brought in a monster truck yeah. into this battle as well. Moshi goes down. Coach Heal on the side of Indostar's being taken out. Evos are having an absolute heyday ah. here. Crushing into the competition. Oh. Looking to get the three out for themselves. Fourth place for Indostar's. Boy Ram still in the competition. But Evos, they want to win. Goodbye, Onyx, and this what? should be for Evos. And Gade is still alive and kicking with the monster truck. It is <laughs> Evos to find with the Booyah. Fantastic play. I mean, he should have been shut down so much more earlier. The monster truck is slower than a snail out there on the battlefield. But it looks like nobody had a sniper to point at him. And everybody else was just getting knocked around. The glue walls could not stand. Even Indostars had to pay the high price because the monster truck just drove straight through them. And this is the team with a cheeky booyah on their side. Positioning supremacy for Evos Divine because there was just nobody disturbing their car. Found. Indostars, on the other hand, they were just sweating buckets, waiting for Buriram to finish the job off. But Onik was being so annoying on the lower floor, refusing to go out, refusing to get taken down, which just meant that Indostars could not move. And taking the portal go out into the open towards that vending machine meant instant death as well, because everybody would be pointing their crosses at them to take them out. Unfortunate for Indostars, but performance-wise, they've definitely managed to overtake attack all around and push the Thai team down to swipe away the fifth spot. Oh man, I mean, just look at the smiles on Evos's face as well. I think the players are also in disbelief that they were allowed to play that late game the way they did as well. I mean, we also saw their point of view when they initially won. And I feel like the main point of the conversation must be, hey guys, we actually managed to use the monster truck in the game because <laughs> it's almost never used. So what a way to end that fifth game of the day. Evos, Indonesian fans going to be super happy with that one. Very entertaining late game as well. But I also have to say everyone that met managed to make it that deep into the game. That compound fight on the eastern side of the circle was just so intense. It was a game of teams just balancing when they stick their head out, when do they leave them, they just wait for the next circle. Because that final circle was pretty brutal as well, AJ. There weren't yep. any areas to actually hide in once that circle started moving. So it's either you eliminate everyone with your existing compound, or you go in, guns blazing into that late game and sort of pray that no one taps you on the head. Yeah, attack all around had a decent round for themselves and they knew the pressure that Indostars was piling onto them. Indostars obviously trying to move on to be the best team of the day and they may have been able to do it or still keep that momentum on their side. Buriram had massive points on the other side as well, but I have no idea exactly how many they picked up. I know how many Indostars managed to walk away with because we were keeping a close eye on them, right? 17 eliminations, and I believe they took away 7 placement points for a total of 24, which means this is an upgrade. Even though they don't walk away with the Booyah, they're just 2 points shy of that booyah that they got on Bermuda earlier. And this was that destruction, right? 
We've seen the monster truck used so many times in that final circle, but a effective use of the monster truck was just never detected because of how slow that monster truck is and because of how easy it is to snap on with that aim with your LMG or the snipers. Usually the players who play that monster truck are annihilated, but he was divine. They got super lucky. <laughs> they got lucky, and I think it was just a case of everyone being so busy. Everyone was on the eastern side of the circle. Evos came in from the west. Yeah. Everyone on the eastern side was just so busy with each other. I mean, the last thing you're thinking about is a monster truck coming your way. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it was brilliant. But definitely interested to see what the players have to say because that end game was brilliant to watch. I can't imagine how great it must have been to actually play it. Let's see what Evos have to say. Booyah for Evos Divine! Congratulations! Wow, finally! We got the double Booyah for Indonesian team today! So, I wanna talk to you. Good day. What's wrong with the your team performance in the previous round? Uh, ada apa dengan penampilan tim kamu di uh, match sebelumnya? Uh, mungkin kebanyakan makan sih. Jadi pada kayak palanya pada pusing. Okay, we ate so much, so we get lightheaded. <laughs> okay, I like your answer. And next, what's your target for the last round? Apa target kamu untuk match terakhir hari ini? Targetnya buyah lagi sih, biar makin atas. Of course, the next target is to get uh, Buya, so we could be the top performer. Uh, I hope so, Buya again. For Indonesian team, are you sure all five in the team can make it the point rush? Kamu yakin gak uh, kelima tim Indo itu bakalan ada di point rush? Ya mungkin sih, insya Allah aja kalau mereka bagus mainnya nanti, pasti bisa. Cuman ya kalau kebanyakan ngomong doang mah gak bakal bisa juga sih. Uh, yeah, we probably can get there, but if we just keep bubbling, yeah, not really. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, G'day. And I'm sure Indonesian team will give us a good performance Apa, for Apa. the last round. So, we ready for the last round? Back to you, Shoutcaster. You see, oh. this confirms my theory. It is the fasting month. All of these Muslim players, they are fasting all throughout the day. And then when it comes to the... Because we start the games at 8 p.m. Plus 8 GMT. That's a little bit. That's just an hour after they break fast. Everybody yeah. is full. Everybody wants to take a good nap. But we will not have to deal with this after the two-week break because we're coming to Hari Raya, baby. And there's no more fasting after that, which means these guys can go nuts from the very first game in itself. Ray walking away with the MVP. Three eliminations, six headshots, four knockdowns. Nothing much to scream about, but it is a booyah at the end of the day, and they're going to be pleased with it. Yeah. Actually, that's... That's a pretty interesting point of view, AJ. I'm genuinely curious to see how some of the teams may improve mm. when we come back for week four and to see, was that really a big impact for some of these players, some of these teams? But we'll leave that for then. It's two weeks from now, so oh, yeah. lots of stuff to think about. We do want to focus on our fifth game and all of our MVPs. MVP for this round is going to be none other than Ray from EVOS securing three eliminations, six headshots, and four assists for the team. Now, here's the thing with EVOS. Mm. This team, they were not heavy contenders in that late game. They played the patient game. They waited for their opportunity to bounce because their opponents were busy fighting each other off. And let's be realistic. If you don't need to jump into the fray, you kind of, you shouldn't. You wait. You wait I... till it's all done, and then you go in. It's typical Indonesia. Indostars does it all the time. Evos Divine does it all the time. But Indostars will still take the elimination leader spotlight with 18 deer. 18. Stepping <laughs> on up. This is an MVP worthy elimination. 10 is insane. Of course, Noki surprisingly taking the elimination leader spotlight this time around as well. It's very rare to see Toda performing this well out there on the battlefield. So good on him. Perhaps this is the start of something new for the Malaysian squad of Toda. Maybe when we come back after the Raya break, they'll breach the top 12 by some miraculous run. Very likely, actually. 
very keen to see some of these teams play in the next coming two weeks. The key players for the round, we have Oatner being revived four times. Two rescues by 18. Yeah, 13 glue walls destroyed by Moshi and six teammate revives on the side of Karura. I have to say, I just love seeing all these like high glue wall destroyed numbers from Moshi because he's yeah. just... It's, it's his job. I mean, we saw in, I think, the, the game that Boriba managed to get their Booyah, he broke 26 blue walls, I think, which is massive. I don't think I've seen any other team with that much, that high number for when it comes to breaking those blue walls. No surprise with the CQCs that Nextera forces you into. Mm. We see a lot of these uh, Charge Buster, Bison, as well as Trogon in play with the Trogon and Bison taking pretty much the equal number one spot with a total number of eliminations. Yes, I mean, considering how close everyone was to one another, you can't really get away with any of those, My any of those snipers. So numbers we've got to break things down here because we have a lot happening folks so in those stars are going to be getting the number one spot for the round because they have 17 eliminations which puts them at 24 points one point over evos who are the ones to get the booyah for the round third place is Boreal ram united with 22 points followed by onik with 18 points and let's not forget a tackle around and see triple g these two teams are insane as well going into that late game unfortunately getting eliminated a little bit too early but so much action from next terra i'm actually quite surprised that we saw so much happening in that late game i kind of thought that more teams would be eliminated much early on yeah indo stars now putting some decent distance between themselves as well as attack all around I say decent, but not great. Attack all around just needs six points to catch up with Interstars. So Interstars just needs to do exactly what they've been doing thus far. I was curious to see what was the total point tally for the side of Buriram to see exactly who's the best team of the day. And Interstars is still holding on to the title with 99 points scored thus far. A single booyah to their name. Buriram is right behind them with 95 points. I've got my fingers crossed here for Interstars to continuously be the number one team of the day. And we've got one more game, one more map, and luck will call whether or not this is possible for Interstars. I wonder which map we're going to head on into. Well, I think we're going to find out in just a second, but what would be the worst map for Interstars? Uh, that's a good question, right? If you look at Interstars Purgatory, it's an absolute no-no, but if it's an Alpine, there's a possible guarantee of a booyah. Here comes the randomizer, baby. Alpine Kalahari. Worst case scenario, next Terra. In the stars are gonna smile. It is going to be next <gasps> Terra. No so, way. Okay, this this is a 50-50. It's We've only got five maps. Next Era is the third best map for Indo Stars. So it's a maybe yes, maybe no, mm. but we just saw what Indo Stars were able to do on Next Terra. They got that number one spot. No booyah, but they got to that final circle in a dominant fashion. There is a high chance here that they walk away with that number one spot with the overall performance of day three from week three. The only threat to that particular position and title is Buriram and their performance. Oh, man. Although, should we also count CGG on this as well, considering that this is technically also a map for this team? Uh, we surely should, but for some reason, C Triple G is just not shining like the bright stars that they are today. Albeit yeah. they're not too far. I mean, 78 points picked up throughout the day, a single booyah to their name. If they really want, they can hustle. We've seen some massive points from them. I believe 32 points that they picked up earlier on with their booyah. So yes, they should still are a threat. I think if you're a C Triple G fan, you kind of have to... Give them your support. This is the last <laughs> game for C Triple G to start picking up those points yeah. and just go back to catching Boreram. Like that's their goal today. And I kind of feel like we're maybe looking at a little bit of a backwards here, you know, like they, they're getting points, but they're not getting enough points to offset everything that Boreram is putting out there. Yeah, so, they're 107 points behind Buriram. So yeah, they, they can hustle, but they'll need to hustle for two weeks straight to catch up to Buriram. So C Triple G might be a threat to the Boya, but C Triple G is in no position to be a threat for that number one spot in terms of performance, unless IDS gets eliminated in the 12th spot and C Triple G picks up yet another massive Booyah. That will be a shocker, that will blow my brain, and that will make me bow down to C Triple G. All right, folks, game number six. 
Mm. Next Terra. Let's see what is going to be happening. We're going to be going from the eastern side to the western side of the map. So a bit of a change up considering the flight path from that last game. Oh yeah. And are we going to be seeing any shenanigans, any last minute hot drops? We are seeing a bit of a mix here for Todak and Dewa. The teams have not settled yet, but it looks like we are looking at a very clean drop for everybody, unless we may see a last minute drop. WAG and attack all round. Potentially mm. going to be going in for a skirmish there. Oh yeah, attack boy. Attack all around already. Scan the area already. They know that WAG is within the vicinity, so they are prepared for battle. The only problem here is finding those guns. Mr. Roll 5 is going to be the first one with the drop. Virus follows it up. Soda biting the dust early here. The rest of the boys need to run. Two more players. Fig Green looks like he's going to be great. Uh, bait, Virus, XM8 Ooh. gets tagged up. SMG versus the Assault Rifle. Assault Rifle has the advantage, but the backup from Mr. 17 just makes that much more easier. Dewa, three early points. Thought up with one final survivor. And attack all round still trying to battle out here with WEG getting one elimination to their name thanks to Jump God. Cyrus going to jump onto Karoro, but he doesn't do enough damage. So Karoro wins that skirmish. And he should be able to get the elimination. No teammates here by Whee! Ghost, though, coming in across that platform. Now, Karori, one tap away, one bullet. That's all oh it takes. But thankfully, his teammate comes in and cleans up. Oh, my goodness. Very scary situation for these teams. But God of Wolf, though, not too happy themselves. Actually being jumped on here by Expand. Oh, boy. That could have actually been way worse than it actually was. But thankfully, able to get that recovery off as well. But Rip! Gonna be caught by Crime MKS. In the meantime, though, a couple of teams are picking up their players as well. God of War picking Rip back up into this game, but Isa gonna be caught by Crime M Crime MKS. Crime just doing quite a lot in this early game so far. A crime's always picking up the slack, always doing a lot out there. The hardest oh, worker, the hardest worker, and the best import I have to say for Malaysia from Indonesia. And the boy's a good soul as well. Very humble. Although he's a great player, he never once flexes in front of his team members, always gives credit to the rest of his team members. And Indostar's actually picking up one player, easy one, and unfortunately, early elimination. But now an all-Indonesian skirmish potentially here at Boxing. Possibly. Two players on the roof, everyone else on the ground. We'll have to see what happens later on, but it looks like CGG going to be spotting out God of Wolf in just a second if they haven't already. And we know C Triple G, this team is really upset. I think with a couple of their rounds, they're going to have to try and pick up the slack with some of those eliminations. And yeah. uh, I think Iza might be joining that list of eliminations. I think they've spotted him as well. In the meantime, though, Onyx finally going to be starting what? this skirmish. And they do get Indo Stars, Gardu winning that fight. So Coach Heal is going to be sent back to the bench. They're going to have to try and go get him picked oh, up as well. It. 18 Deer also getting picked up as well. Onyx. Just massive wins across the board. In the meantime, though, Lean was able to pick up Coach Heal, so it's not over for Indo Stars, but they're going to have to try and figure out how they're going to recover in this game. Oh, boy. That's not looking too good here, AJ. Oh, Lean was so lucky that he did not get jumped. The elimination was very slow. He managed to pull out his pocket market, bring his player back in. So there's one insurance policy out here for Indo Stars. They have to slow that pace down and hope and pray they do not get found early. And Coach Hill brings in a revival. Raz brings in his partner. Indo Stars are back in business, baby. They're back in business, but they're going to have to try and figure out how to get their econ back up because the team is basically just going to go for a clean reset here. Now, God of Wolf... They've poked there here. Tonak not going to be too happy, but they do get Noki. Great shots coming in from Dikang. So that's going to be an elimination to God of Wolf. Traps though on the rooftop. Not sure if they're going to be expecting him here. Flash in the meantime, they're going to be going for an elimination onto Kochi. So IDS. Even though they're picking up players, they do have to consider how they're going to safely loot back up because obviously you want to spread out as much as you can. But uh, obviously, if you're spreading out, you're also vulnerable to giving away those free eliminations. It's going to be a tough one here for IDS. I'm kind of scared that they've actually ran out of gas here. Speaking of gas, though, Zen, they're going to have to try and go for the reload. But Rip wins this one. So that's going to be another elimination to the pockets of God of Wolf. Yeah, great use of the Tatsuya for Rip to catch up with his opponent. And Toda has got traps right on top of the bridge. Question is, how many players does Toda have still on their side? GOW doesn't really care at this point of time. They just want to pick up 
anything that they can find out there on the battlefield. GOW loses one to Dewa. United attack all around. On the other hand, attacking on Egg Olympus out in the open. Garf do tagged up already. 30% on the HP. Finisher from Pokey. Keep us still Ooh. alive. Garf do does turn onto Pokey. That is crazy. The guy had a sliver of health left. Oh boy, I think this might just be it for Onyx. They've been completely surrounded. The tackle around's gonna be coming in for the attack themselves. Can they get the finishing blows? They get Joel. Kiba actually gonna be revived on the other side of the map, it seems. They're gonna continue on though. Onyx, they might have one survivor left, but if the survivor is not able to get these revives off again, this might just be the end of the road here for Onyx as they, as they eventually are gonna be tapping out for the round. Now, attack all round happy with their performance so far elimination oh, yeah. leaders with seven eliminations to their name they want these points this is a great way to finish if they're able to keep this momentum going now leem from ids gonna be eliminated by flash but look at this coach Heal, two more revived it's a game of revival here for ids they are so desperate to try and put themselves in a favorable position but so far every part of the map has been occupied Xara usually is pretty slow with the eliminations, all thanks to the number of compounds that are in and around the area. But unfortunately, it's not the case in this game. Multiple eliminations from the very start. As to see, Triple G has found one more for themselves. Traps, nowhere to go. And one more secures the elimination expand. No revivals thus far. They have been able to stay away from a lot of that heavy firepower that the other teams can bring to them. To put on them but in the meantime indostars i really am curious whether or not they're going to be able to keep that number four sorry the number five spot for themselves because attack all around is hot and clearly thailand wants to finish all five teams at the top of the leaderboard by the time we're done with the third week uh oh they were running right into Whoa. C-Triple-D. Oh, they got one more beautiful oh, shot coming through. That is massive because C-Triple-G, they're all on the low ground, so no way to reinforce and no real way to go up on that high ground as well. So for Dewa, massive win there to be getting rid of one more. Oh, again, we're seeing Indostars losing players. Again, Leem going down, instant revival coming in from Raz. Every time the player goes down, they just get constantly revived. Dewa, what's the play for this team? I think they're trying to play aggressive, but I mean, they're gone. They've left. They don't want to deal with it. Crime M MKS, though, not going to be too Good happy. Name. Getting dropped themselves. Cos Q going to be picked up as well. One more as well as Peter going into the compound to try and apply some pressure. Keep them busy. Act as decoys as the team does eventually try and go for the recovery. But Peter and Cos Q going to be going down. These are oh, massive wow. losses to wow. the team. What has happened? Well, Expand oh, has woken up. All of that lethargy from the Rendang and the Lemang all wearing off. Otna, the final player there. Second circle, bro. You can use your pocket market, but it looks like Otna's broke. And this is why you got to take that extra pocket money from Daddy before you come out for a game day. Otna down. Cobra with a shot. But no team elimination yet. It looks like he did manage to bring in the revival. Oh man, super lucky. Oh, on, one one player from Toadak oh, coming mama. in. He wants the vending machine. Not the vending machine, he's all alone. And C, Triple G have been eliminated. Oh dear. Speaking of dear, IDS are losing another player in 18 dear. Toadak as well as IDS continuing with the constant revivals in this match. Oh no. I have to say, Indo Stars, the game of survival this round has been crazy. But going into that late game, I just don't know how much more they can take. Speaking of, though, Bro Ram trying to go for eliminations themselves. Going to be jumping onto Expand, who are out in the open, only relying on glue walls for protection. But against a team like Bro Ram, glue walls are just not going to suffice. Turn going to be sending players in as well. Both Malaysian teams just struggling with this constant fire coming in from the Thai team. Once again, Moshi with the Riptide Rhythm, and that puts Expand in a very, very precarious it position. Ram MKS trying to find the reposition. Kochiyu with the shots against Toda, but the reposition by Expand has managed to allow them to survive for the time being. x -Roy, good use of the portal goal. Zuez desperately trying to recover his HP here. Team Flash, on the other hand, right in front to punish Expand with one simple mistake. Flash should be able to take out all of their players, but X-Roy is able to give them that information from up top that Bird's Eye View serving Expand really well. 
this game is getting so tense for these teams. Flash trying to go for these eliminations onto Onik, and they will successfully get them. Vicrio not going to be too happy there as he does get quickly snapped down by Indo Stars. This team is slowly making their recovery, mm. but I'm not sure if they're happy to jump into these engagements just yet. They'd love to go for these little pickoffs, continue to loot, and hopefully just wait for that ultra late game. But speaking of the circle, though, we've got a couple teams here on the bottom right-hand corner of that circle trying to fight their way in to that compound, but there's just too much open ground, so they have to try and fight their way uh -oh. through. Diana's going to go down. Isa as well is down to Rip and Dikang. It's going to be quite a lot to ask for from these players. Shindo dropping in from the back line as well. Going to be causing some issues here. Artemis flying in. And so does his teammate Yanbin as well. God of War's not going to be happy. Dikang is out, and I think this might just be it for Rip as well. All alone. Flash looking to get this elimination for themselves. Volley comes ah, in. What? And that should be it. Bury Ram? How? Hello? Okay, GOW out, I understand, but how did Bury Ram get eliminated? That is definitely a shocker. But let's focus on the teams that are still in this battle. We still have Team Flash trying to go for the vending machine, but attack all around is there. They have so much vision to play with as well. So I think they're more than ready to try and jump onto Flash as they try to use that vending machine. Volley, though, going to be attacked. Yambin on the low ground. Jump God trying to run in, but the glue walls blocked from Yambin. Beautiful play to prevent Jump God from going in for that rush. Volley, though, coming in from the outside. Maybe can try and go for a backstab. He's in that blue zone. Not going to be too happy unless he can find that opening. Coon God, though, is keeping his distance. Spotting for the team. Oh, my goodness. That snipe almost connecting. But I have to say, they flash. Oh, they're playing this so windows. slowly. So methodically, Indo Stars, is this the time for this team to shine? They had such a horrible early game. Maybe this is how they loop back up, AJ. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thoda bows out in the eighth spot. Expand still alive and kicking. Indo Stars still alive and kicking. Buriram out already. Indo Stars bound to be the best team oh, out here for gosh. day number three in week number three. 18 Dia going in for the finisher. Team Flash out Flash. of the elimination already. Attack all around. Yeah. They fall like dominoes Woo. one after the other. And Indo Stars, they stand up high. Eight yeah. eliminations in hand. He was divine going down one after the other as well. This is just insanity. The fight, the resilience of Indo Stars. You have to respect that. Indo Stars might have to go for a rebrand into Invincible Stars. You think you can take them out, but you can't. The match isn't over yet, though. AJ still plenty to go. Oh, yeah. Our main contenders: Evos, Expand, and Indo Stars. Onik, do you have two players remaining? But with two players only, there's only so much you're going to be able to do, and their positioning not really the best. They're both spread out. If any of these players get knocked, there's no way that they can get picked up at all. Evos, though, looking to come in from the northern side. Expand. Managing to keep towards the western side of that circle. And then, of course, you have Indo Stars occupying the right hand side. Oh man, this is going to be such an insane late game. Looks like Joel, though, going to be shot down. So Onyx down to their final player. And the circle has been decided. It's towards Onyx. So Indo Stars making their way through. It's clear. So they will be able to at least find that cover. I mean, all, almost all these players were fasting the whole day. Okay, they all just broke fast. It was a very difficult period for three weeks during the month of Ramadan, fasting and breaking fast, getting into these matches, but they are showing us their resilience. Once we are done with Hari Raya, they are going to come back even more stronger, and the Southeast Asian scene is just going to pop on a whole other level. Expand hanging on, two Indonesian teams surrounding them, but I have to say, in the stars, they have won the day. At the end of the day, they wanted to be the number one team, and they are standing as the number one team in performance at Mirable in terms of performance. And look at the positioning as well. All splitting up. No Riptide Rhythm can tear them apart because they don't know who's been eliminated. It, it is possible that the Skyler is still out there. Indostars trying to play that counter against that expand. Trying to hold their position. No more circles to play around with now. Everything's just going to go down to the center. 25 seconds to make your move in the open grounds. Oh, this is crazy. I mean, looking at the team so far, I actually think Indo Stars have the advantage when it comes to positioning because they have so many things that they can potentially hide behind. It's going to be so tough to Evos and expand to make their way through the center. I hope they have the glue walls ready, but hang on a minute. Look at the portal goes being deployed. They are going to wait for this timing here. Expand. They all hop on down. Portal go is there. The timing though, where are... Oh, they went 
exactly oh, the opposite came... side. Instead, they didn't go straight in for Indostars. This is a second portal goal that's used. They went outside the circle. They made a long rotation around. Expand, you crazy monsters. They tank the blue. They go in here. And Indostars, they back away from Evo's Divine. They know now that they might just get backstab. And they turn around to the left-hand side. They want to focus on Expand a little bit as well. And a three-way fight all through those blue wall melters break out between the three teams. Oh, these teams, they're fighting each other, so there is no direct 1v1 at the moment. Just so many grenade glue wall melters being thrown down. These teams are getting ready to push. It looks like Ray on the side of Evos wants to make that move happen, and they're aiming for expand. Indostars on the left-hand side are questioning what they want to do here. Are they going to jump on Evos? I think they're going to let Evos take on expand. So Indostars, they're going to hold back. Expand, they have to somehow survive this pressure. Oh, X-Ray going to be coming in. They want to go on to Ray. Who gets the first shot? So yeah, but that cluster for aim gone. Indostar says, hey, boys, you guys just carry on. We'll just come back. You know, there was a lot of hustling, a lot of revival at the very start of the game. We aim need to gone. just take a little bit of rest. UAV now sent out. They get the information for all of the spots. But the ice grenade is going to be tagging up two players. Crime MKS does get aim gone. Lean there, executes Zuez. X-Roy goes down as well. Grenades after one another and expand. Only two more survivors left. Evos, though, they're still looking very healthy with three players, nine players alive on the map. So three apiece so far. We've seen three casualties at the moment, but this, we're running out of space here, AJ. It's time to go expand. They've been oh, absolutely crime. cornered. Crime in the blue zone. It's actually going to be Indo Stars with four players occupying the majority of the circle. Crime going to go down. Cobra going into the blue. Indo Stars still in that circle. Evos trying to make their way through, trying to use the terrain to their advantage, going on the high ground, sniping from above. Maybe Evos are going to be able to do it. They've got one player left. It's going to become down to Ray. Ray, can he win for the team who's still three players alive? Evos, I think they may have done it. Avax, Evos, what happened? Evos oh divine. Beautiful stuff. They did respect, they gave their, their they, they did mention earlier on that Indostars were, of course, the better team of the day, but they were going to try their very best and try they did. Evos Divine with a back-to-back -back solid performance out there on the battlefield. And who would have thought that this team could actually pull it off because they hit that fantastic booyah at next era earlier on and it seems like they just want to dominate this map back to back they get the booyah for indonesia back to back we saw all three indonesian teams in the center in that final circle it looks like indonesia loves to play at next era oh man that late game use of the terrain from evos the fact that they were able to jump onto the crates they had the top down views they were getting those shots off and Indo Stars didn't have access to that terrain either, right? Because yeah. based on the angle that these teams are coming in, the it, it, it was only Evos that had a way up there. So because they were able to get up there, and Indo Stars were just at the mercy from that top-down attack, and also the fact that they were able to use, utilize the crate as well, Evos. I, I kind of wonder, like at the end of that fight, did they actually think that they were going to win that? Because it was so so close I, it, it doesn't matter i mean at the end of the day the booyah is just like uh, how, how, do I, how do i put this just an extra flex which means nothing to them right even if even for Buriram united esports they really don't care about the booyah at the end of the day the booyah only gives you 12 points the eliminations can take you to the top of the leaderboard and Indostars were trying to be that number one team in terms of performance and they pulled it off. Indonesia overall had a fantastic run today. Even Evos Divine managing to be in the top three teams when it comes to performance. The only team from Thailand in the top three is Buriram United and they faulted early. A surprising, a shocker of defeat as they got taken out in the 10th spot. We didn't see what happened to them but in the stars were sure as hell delighted. It looks like they prayed hard and their prayers were answered but they did not depend on just pure luck to get them to that final circle i mean it was great strategizing and the revival gameplay if anything luck was against indo stars they kept yes. getting caught out they kept getting slain they kept getting kicked out of the <laughs> lobby and brought right back in you have to respect the resilience and then to get into the final circle with all four players ready for battle and for what to bring it down to decide the booyah was i have to say luck evos divine mm. got it because of the positioning for sure 
but the circle and the chaos of the blue wall maze outside made it so impossible for either Indostars or Expand to circle around. I mean, we saw what happened to Expand. Those, the Tatsuya burst, but they were just bursting into more glue walls. <laughs> it was just a maze. They couldn't find it. Look, I want to say, if anything, I want to thank the players for giving us such an amazing game to sort of end out things for week three because oh, we yeah. are on a two week break. And I'm very sure this last game is going to be on our minds for the next two weeks. I'm really excited now to see, like, if we're getting games like this and we're only halfway through, what are we going to be getting for the next three weeks? That's, know, right? that's going to be a big question for me. But the interview is ready. Let's see what Evos has to say after an amazing way to finish game number six. First booyah that Indonesian team finally got a three booyah today. Oh my god. How do you feel to get booyah two times in a row? Gimana perasaan kamu akhirnya dapat booyah dua kali berturut-turut? Uh, kalau buat booyah sih sebenarnya kita udah setting. Kalau main match 1 2 3 4 itu ya udah nggak apa-apa lah biar yang ono senang dulu. Jadi biar liburan mereka nggak tenang gitu. Yeah, so we already set it up for the Buya today. So for the match, the first, the second, the third, and the fourth match, uh, that's fine. But so that the other teams can enjoy their holiday. Okay, but I don't know. I always like your answer. So next, what's your good weapon for FFWSC? Apa senjata andalan kamu untuk FFWSCI? Buat FFWSCI, lontar sih. Cuman kan disuruh nggak boleh main bom katanya. Iya, yeah, M79. F79. Yes. Yeah. 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 Any word for the bottom six team? Ada yang mau disampaikan nggak untuk uh, enam tim terbawah? Enam tim terbawah dari 18. Iya. Yeah. Uh, buat enam tim terbawah, ya udah di bawah aja dulu. Kita lagi nikmatin di atas soalnya, yang kiri-kiri aja. Oke, okay, so for the bottom six teams, please stay at the bottom because we're still enjoying our place. <laughs> Oke, okay, thank you so much, good day. So... <laughs> <laughs> See you after it, holiday, bye-bye and back to you, Shotcaster. Gede is like, see ya. <laughs> Gotta love it. What do you have to say to the bottom six teams? You stay there. <laughs> you stay there so we can have fun up here. You stay there so that we can get to the grand finals. I mean, even if they were to climb up Evos Divine, I'm pretty sure they'll not be messing around with you guys. I mean, the performance from Evos Divine has been divine indeed. They perhaps didn't get the number one spot, but Indonesia is truly proud of what they've been able to do out there on the final day of play today. Ray with the MVP well-deserved seven of those eliminations, 10 knockdowns. 2,643 on the damage. I mean, I have to say, brilliant in terms of just sticking their noses out of the battle, just allowing everybody to do their work first, and then finding the best place to position themselves inside the container, down in the middle. It just gave them some natural defense. They just had to play around with those glue walls a little bit. Brilliant stuff all around. Brilliant stuff amazing to watch and just i guess like we get a bit of a glimpse into the thought process of these players as well um if we had to sort of break down the thought process for evos and indo stars evos we could definitely tell there was self-preservation but they also balance that with aggression do you feel like indo stars maybe played that late game a little bit too defensive trying to focus more on trying to survive that circle rather than eliminating evos I know that's just classic Indo stars, right? They always want to be the last team to have the say. They don't want to be the first ones there. Uh, you know, they always say the early bird gets the worm, but the problem is, how do you know you're not the worm? And that's that's the exact way Indo stars thinks. They do not want to be the worm. Don't want to be the worm. Got to be the bird. So, <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, I, I think Evos is very happily going to be the bird there perched on top with those points very very happy with themselves especially with, especially with how they ended the tournament for the first three weeks and with that said 
All the other teams are now locked in for three weeks of play. We've still got three more weeks to go after a two week break. Mm -hmm. But I'm genuinely curious to know what is going to be spoken about amongst these teams during that two week break. Whew. What are the teams? Oh my gosh. What a highlight, baby. Indonesia, once again, back to back games, all three Indonesian teams were in that final circle. So well deserved respect for Indonesia here. Kuchil Ray, Ray getting the double, Gade as well. Everybody deserves to be highlighted. Uh, Kachil got revived three times and still performed in that final circle. I have to say, respect to Indostars because I have not seen a team get tortured that much. I have not seen a team get revived that much and still get to that final circle and dominate when it comes to those points because dominate they surely did, right? 121 points Indostars walked away with through the six games today. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the guns themselves tell the story of how that match ended, right? Mm. Just everyone in each other's face trying to go for that one money shot. Absolutely crazy. So anyone that might be tuning into the broadcast now and you missed game number six, go back, rewind, YouTube, whatever platform, go back and watch this game. Absolutely insane incredible late game as well but here's the game standings to wrap things up for week number three teams in group a b and c have wrapped up all of their games and are going to be on break for the next two weeks evos can be taking home 28 points for themselves super happy with these points indo stars will be taking home 22 continuing on with i guess the most best consistent play throughout the day. How many points total did Indo Stars actually get from all six matches now? 121 points. 73 eliminations, wow. 48 from placements. They were hands down the best team of the day. And of course, uh, all thanks to Buriram for getting taken out super early. They were able to perform, right? Because if Buriram had been in that final circle, obviously things would have been so different. You saw the maze of blue balls. That's the kind of scenario where Skylar would have been so deadly. And I think this is something that the Indonesians, the Malaysians, the Vietnamese squads really need to consider as well during the two weeks break the snipers need to start using Skylar need to start practicing Skylar you see Buriram is working on this so much because they know this is what Brazil is going to do on the world stage later on Buriram is not treating this as a competition they're treating this as a professional scrimmage where they can practice some of their their strategies that they've been plotting out and so close to the 700 points. Yesterday, they fell short from the 600-point mark. Today, they fall short from the 700-point mark. But that, that's the only negative feedback that we have for Buriram, that they could not hit those crazy, insane numbers. Because at the end of the day, they're still dominating up at the top. I mean, by what? They are clear at the top by 110 points. And of course, the MVP leader, Funa, the man who made so many mistakes out there, during these experiments caused Buriram so many of those matches, so many of those booyahs. But when he refined his gameplay and he stepped it back up, he is the most dominant player out there. Yes, and this week's Predator is going to be none other than 18 Deer from Indostars. 42 eliminations to his name. Oh, and look yeah. how closely he's trailed by Buriram. Wasana, Funa, right on his tail with 40 eliminations apiece. I mean, this is a testament to just how good today was. Mm -hmm. It's been the first day of play day for Indostars. Just really great week. Yeah, man. I mean, Wasana, a total of 136 eliminations so far in the competition, followed by Funa with a total of 124 eliminations. I mean, when you've got the two top eliminators in one team, what can you expect? You can expect a 110-point lead. That is a whole tournament's usual worth of points just with that one team. That is a, a great day of play. Today, we saw Indostars walk away with 121 points. They are clear by 110 points. It's a full day of booyahs and great plays. That's what Buriram has. Well, that's going to be it for us, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Free Fire World Series Southeast Asia 2024. My name's Natalie. His name is the Masashi AJ. We'll see you in two weeks' time. Supplier! How'd you like them apples?